This is Dolan ETV, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, and welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers game coverage here on the channel today. Preseason between the Flames and the Oilers. The first battle of Alberta between NHL pros this season in the cumulative 2022-2023 NHL season. An exciting time for us Oilers fans, as it appears Dylan Holloway Ryan McLeod and Warren Fogle will be our top line pairing this evening for the forwards. And I'm just trying to figure out where those lines are for the Oilers tonight so as we can get that graphic up there and we can make sure we know exactly who is in the lineup this evening for our Edmonton Oilers. Of course, coming off of the 3 nothing loss to none other than the Seattle Kraken last game out on Monday. I must say, a top 10 live stream all time for me here on Dolan TV. So that was pretty phenomenal right out of the gate to really crack home some numbers like right instantaneously getting back streaming. So that was phenomenal. But folks, we are getting ready for the Battle of Alberta tonight. Wipe the slate clean. Let's do it all over again and see what we can get done this evening. It's going to be interesting, that is for sure. But as things get ready to roll tonight, I'm very interested to see over the Oilers. It's more of an AHL lineup. I wish I could uh, screen grab this off my phone, and I guess to some degree I could. Let me see if I could graphic that up for somehow, some way. Let's see if we can do it. Nope, that's what that does. There we go, that works. Boom, look at me go. Ace, ace on the old editing on the fly. Let's see if I can't just go over there to screenshots. And here we go, folks. Hopefully tonight, not as scrambly of a start to the stream as we have had the past two nights. That's been pretty unfortunate right of the gate both nights. But hopefully tonight... We've got things perfected and ready to rock. I know we don't have any audio issues as far as I know because we posted the video yesterday and everything was good to go. So we're hopefully getting things rolling. I'd like to welcome everyone, welcome everyone into the stream as you're joining in here. I see there's 11 of you creeping in on now 12. So we're rocking and rolling to start this uh, stream, I guess you could say, as I think I've saved that up to the old cloud so let's go over to the old cloud and see what the old cloud's telling me for in terms of having a photo ready for me to share and download and get going with you guys here let's see um all right so we want we don't want that we want albums we want uh oh, geez how do you how do you navigate your own storage that's a that's a good question um let's see here where do you go um Screenshots, yeah, we want screenshots, please. And that is going to be in there from way back when. Oh, okay, I'm all kinds of turned around and confused, that's for sure. Okay, that makes absolutely no sense. So, folks, again, I'm turned around. Go bigger. Um, let me see if I can't find, oh, what we got here. That's that. We want to go here and, huh. I don't know, I don't know what to tell you other than unless I could figure out if creations. Oh, nothing there. Oh my goodness. Any help would be useful, that is for sure, but that's fine. We'll battle through and get it going. Apparently I can't get it going, so I'll just um I just won't worry about it. That's what we're just not gonna do. We just aren't gonna worry about it and we'll just wait for Bob Stoffer, as he has all preseason, to tweet out the lines. That'll be our case in point. Of course, as soon as the Oilers lineup is, or not lineup, live stream is live, I will have the link for you at the top of the chat. But before that, we have to just wait for things to load up on edmontonoilers.com. So there's a ways to go yet. Folks, it's only 6.30. Best part about starting early is you get the troubles out of the way nice and early, and that's the key part here. But Yes, tonight the Battle of Alberta, a big key game for our Edmonton Oilers, just necessarily to keep that narrative alive, right? Tonight, you just want to have a little bit of fun. You want to go out there. You don't want to get embarrassed, number one, because of, right, obviously there's always going to be those guys trolling on Twitter and trolling on Facebook and having a good old time with nothing on us, something. So uh, that's, that's keep the narrative in your favor, I guess. And for the Oilers, the biggest way to keep the narrative in your favor is let Dylan Holloway have a night. Obviously, game one of the preseason, he shone 
bright. He was the brightest star on the ice in that game. And hopefully tonight he can continue that once again. He's been the brightest star on the ice most nights so far, what, four out of five games? And the fifth game he hasn't played. So tonight, the sixth game, hopefully he continues that trend and absolutely is a super rock star for us tonight again. So we're hoping for that right now. But as it currently sits for the Oilers, we don't have much in terms of news. It looks like the Oilers just got their touchdown in Calgary on camera. I know I had a question the other day about somebody um, somebody asking about Mete Petrov and it looks like he will end up playing this game on the fourth line with Luke Esposito, Greg McCaig, and that is his fourth line dealio. It's Picard and Skinner. Like I said, I was waiting for Bob Stoffer to tweet out the lineup. Well, my friends, my friends, let's get to it, shall we? Bob Stoffer has just done that. I was waiting for that tweet. It came out at 629. It's 633. Let's get to this Oilers lineup and get our pregame fully up and underway, shall we? It's been long enough of me rambling about nothing, trying to find things in Google Photos. So let's go see what we can't figure out here. And boom, I will make that a little bit bigger because eh, for the game, I'll make it smaller. But for now, on preseason discussion purposes, we'll get things going. Apparently, um, no, that is that is not what I'm looking for. Tyson, that is not what you were looking for. You were looking for the September 28th lines, my friend. Here we go. That's better. We'll do it live like we used to say in broadcasting college. Uh, Dylan Holloway, Ryan McLeod, and Warren Fogle, your top line tonight. Yeah, that uh, that's a little more comfortable than top line Shore, Ryan, and Yanmark. They'll be the second line tonight. And then you got an NHL potential fourth line for the Oilers this season, too, in Tyler Benson, Brad Malone, and Jake Vertanen. So you got a NHL-esque top nine. Obviously, you can say what you want about that third line, but those are all NHL players at some point in their career. Greg McCaig's been there, but Luke Esposito, Greg McCaig, and Matt Faye Petrov are not expected to be the leaders in this game by any means. However, anything you get out of them is bonus, 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 that is for sure. Then you have what looks to be an NHL top four. I think after our discussion we had on Marcus Niemelainen last night is simply put, Ryan Murray is going to be in the NHL at some point this year. Tyson Berry is obviously going to be there. Marcus Niemelainen is going to earn his time and make it impossible not to play him. Jason Demers, he's been an NHL pro for years, and potentially we do end up signing him and keeping him around for right shot depth. Dmitry Samarukov, if he doesn't get claimed on waivers, plays NHL minutes this year. And Philip Kemp, this is the most interesting prospect on the D, is this is more than likely a make it or break it season for him. And what he makes of it, who knows your guess is as good as mine, my friends. All right, let's quickly rock on over to see what we've got going on the stream. We're up to 29 viewers. Rock and roll. We're crushing it. And it's the first Battle of Alberta tonight. Absolutely. And I'm seeing comments about a little rough and tumbly Battle of Alberta. I don't know who's going to do it other than maybe Malone, Vertanen, Esposito, and McKaig. That's really all I'd see in terms of Chuck and Knuckles, unless Jason Demers somehow gets involved in that situation as well. Uh, Calvin Picard, never know. Um, yes, yeah, so folks, if you're just joining in, we will have, my friends, we will have the link as soon as it is ready over on EdmontonOilers.com. I think I've found a pretty weird niche, to be honest with you here on these live streams, being able to have the link at the top of the chat entertain you for two to three minutes while it takes you time to figure out where to find that link and then all of a sudden you're off and gone but friends we've been crushing it like last live stream last game out was my ninth best live stream all time on youtube so we are we are crushing it um anyway let's see what we can find it is not on sportsnet tonight um it will be it will be on edmontonoilers.com via their unlisted YouTube live stream. So it'll kind of all meld together and it'll all work together and we'll get it going as time goes on. And what I'll just do is basically grab that link, forward it on to you at the top of the chat, and we'll move on and we will have ourselves a good night of talking hockey. If you want to have me on and chatting or if you want to just enjoy the game and quite simply, 
I don't blame you. If it's Jack and Bob on the call again tonight, go enjoy the game. Don't worry about me. I'll be just fine. We'll have enough people coming in and out throughout the night to try and get to Jack and Bob that it won't matter if you're here or not tonight. I'd love to have you. I'm not saying that I wouldn't love to have you, but I want you to enjoy the game first and foremost because, right, this is a free game that you don't have to pay for. You get to watch it on your TV. You get to watch all these young Oilers guys that are up and coming and going to make an impact either this season or next. So keep that in mind as well, folks. Secondary to that, if you're new to the channel and you're like, man, you know what? This is not the worst pregame I've ever heard. Because trust me, I've had worse. I have had worse. I can attest to that. Um, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button here on the channel. We're just about to 8,850 subscribers. We've been absolutely blitzing this month. Just a frame of reference for you. We've hit 186 subscriber gain this month and with today we will be hopefully over 200 this month so not a bad month to return back to YouTube all right so there we go we will get the live stream link for you as soon as we can do that I guarantee you that and I promise you that of course if the Oilers do the old seven o'clock scramble like they did against the Winnipeg Jets on the four o'clock scramble we might have a little bit of a problem but we'll figure that out as it goes on I promise you that. Looks like post-game essentials. They don't have anything as of yet, but they will get it going. It's only 6.39. I started the stream a little bit too early, so let's just um, let's just tone back, Tyson. Let's just settle back, dial it down, and we'll be good to go. All right. Cup of water in. See if we can't figure some other stuff out here on Twitter. Of course, you've seen the lineup. If you're just joining us, the lineup is posted. I don't even know which side of the screen right here. It's Holloway, McLeod, Fogel, Yanmark, Shore, and Ryan. So they're making they're making that line earn their season. That's that's good to see because you've seen Brad Malone involved quite a bit this preseason. You've seen those three involved. Tyler Benson's been in all three. Jake Vertanen's been in all three. Luke esposito has been in two. McKaig's been in two. Petrov is getting his first taste. Murray, Barry, nemalinen has been there for all three. Jason Demers, Sam Rukov's been there for two. And I think Kemp's been there for two as well. And of course, Picard and Stuart Skinner have been there as well. I imagine from what I've seen, Picard will start. And it may even be doubtful if Stuart Skinner does indeed get any playing time tonight. So... Let's see what else we can find on the old Oilers Twitter list and see if we can't figure this out back. Uh, Oilers Nation had a typo in their tweet. And there really isn't much else, I don't think. So, um, obviously, Kurt Levin speculating about Holloway, McLeod, and Fogel in Calgary tonight. Might this be the Oilers' third line this season? Very well could be. And that's the exciting part here for the Oilers is you could end up watching a very young, talented line. Get it going. And all right, Epiphany again kicks it off with the $20 kickback for the camera. So give me a second and see what I can't get going here for you in just a sec. Give me a sec. I want to show you something. All right, my friends. So this is the message uh, received in the comments here from Epiphany showing off the $20 dono there with the big message saying toward the camera. Just wanted to kick out oh, for all watching. Well, friends, um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we got something to use this for coming up next weekend. Watch for me not to be live streaming the Oilers next weekend. We may indeed be live streaming some uh, actual hockey up somewhere in central Alberta next weekend if uh, my buddy can set it up for me. Um, yeah, we picked up this beauty, a Canon XA15. Where does it say? Right there. Canon XA15, so a nice new good model of uh, Canon camcorder, video cam, whatever you want to say. It's got all the port plugs, but essentially, if you know anything about my history here on YouTube, I've always talked about how I did a lot of broadcasting with Cold Lake Ice over the years, how I've done a lot of a lot of stuff over the, my career and you can kind of find bits and tiddly bits on uh, my channel about it but anyway the one thing I always lacked to do more of that stuff was a camera and now thankfully 
Due to working a couple of rodeos and a couple of hockey tournaments this summer, I was able to put together enough money to buy that camera. And folks like Epiphany and several other folks this um, this past couple of live streams have been very generous in chipping and putting it towards the camera and I really appreciate that and it's very crazy to think you guys have got my back still after everything that's gone on over the past two three years but friends I promise you as soon as we can secure something I'm going to show you off what this camera can do and we're going to show off what Dolany TV can do in the live hockey sports scene that is for sure heck I might even have some ringette this year I don't know what I'm going to figure out but we'll figure it out as it goes along I promise you that much now Back quickly, one last thank you to you, Sir Epiphany. We got to get this going towards that link. Of course, that's the question I've received most in the comments tonight. Nobody, uh, nobody's asked me really more so. Where uh, are you? Am I going to show the game? No. The question is, how do I get the link? And my friends, I appreciate that because we've actually done something very right here on the channel. I will have the link for you as soon as the Oilers put it out. I promise you that. We'll get it going and we'll get this stream a rocking as soon as we can. Because like I said, I'd love to have you for the entire night, but I'd prefer you're able to watch the game. That means a lot more to me. If you know anything about kind of the mission statement I have always said about myself, it's for me, I am a broadcaster with a passion for bringing fans closer to the team they love. So if I can be the man to pass you along the link to watch the Oilers, and you don't want anything to do with me beyond that, that's all that matters. My job, my mission statement is for fulfilled after you click on the Oilers link and start watching the game. So that's fine and dandy by me. Tonight, we will get that going for you as soon as the Oilers put that out. Let me just put my camera away so as we don't uh, accidentally knock it over with some water or something, and we'll be good to go. And I promise you soon, we're going to get out and about and do some camera work as well and get some kind of video made up just to kind of show it off. Anyway, folks, um, yeah, we're going to... We're going to sit here and rock and roll, I promise you that, tonight. And, oh, yes, friends, I, I, I've just noticed we jumped up to 45 viewers, so pardon me. I was showing off the camera, explaining why people are mentioning a camera about donations and stuff here on Dolany TV tonight. Uh, folks, this is your lineup between the Oilers and Flames tonight for the Oilers' side. Dylan Holloway, Ryan McLeod, Warren Fogel, so... In of, of itself, that is enough to be watching. Matthias Janmark, Devin Shore, Derek Ryan, eh, top six, Devin Shore. Uh, Dave Tippett's happy with that. But we get where this is going. It's only preseason. I'm only making fun of it. Hey, it is what it is. Tyler Benson, Brad Malone, Jake Vertanen. Theoretically, if Tyler Benson plays like he did against Winnipeg, if Jake Vertanen finally shows up, more than he did in the first two games. And Brad Malone's along for the ride. That's actually your second line tonight. Luke Esposito, Greg McKaig, Matt Fay, Petrov. They're there to play 10 minutes, probably 12 minutes, maybe if we stay out of the penalty box. Earn some ice time, earn a look, and earn another game. That's really all these guys are here to do tonight. Ryan Murray, Tyson Berry, Marcus Namula. I'm butchering that. I'm actually looking at it. I'm not... I'm not just saying it, I'm looking at it, and that's what's screwing me up. Marcus Niemelainen, Jason Demers, Samarukov, Kemp are your defensemen. I believe it is Calvin Picard who starts tonight. Stuart Skinner backing up, potentially not even going to get into game action if they want to give Picard his full last look or full look of the preseason. I don't know how that is going to work out tonight, but the goaltending situation will be interesting. So, folks... That's as far as I know. I'm glad I can bring that and cover that off for you. So hopefully things get going and have been tuned in. Uh, thank you, Kelly. Appreciate that. All right. Can I post the link? Uh, yes. Folks, that is, I will get back to that. Sorry. Every time I get on off on a tangent and talk about something, there's like another 20 people that join the stream. So I got to keep that in mind when I'm looking at the analytics and it's saying I'm turning over like 15 viewers a minute that, uh, New folks are joining all the time looking for that link. And I promise, stick around, hang out with me, and we'll get things rolling here for the Oilers live stream in matters a matter of mere moments. But it looks like, actually tonight, the live stream is on edmontonoilers.com. If you can believe this, 
And what it looks like is the live stream is actually on the EdmontonOilers.com player. So um, let me go here and let me see if I can't get this going. And then we're going to see what we can't figure out. Um, we don't want pregame. Hold on. How's this going to work? Give me a second. Something different's happening over on Oilers OilersTV.com. Um, let me see if I can't get this going here. See if I can't get this going. And let me see. There we go. Yep. So they're coming out for warm up now. And I can't for some reason seem to click that like I thought I would. Okay. All right. All right. Let's get this rolling. Um, there's got to be a player app somehow, some way, right? It's got a figure. It's got a figure. Um, latest from Oilers TV. Okay. Let's see if I can't click on Oilers TV. And hold on. There we go. All right. So there it is. Oilers at Flames preseason. It's actually on the Oilers website tonight. Folks, it's not a YouTube link. It's not going to be as clean. And it's going to be the Flames feed. So I welcome you. I welcome you to uh, stick with me if you want the Oiler take on things here tonight. But live game feed. Live Oilers game feed. There we go. And I'll put the watch there. I, th I think the phrasing of it is um, is what has thrown a couple of people off since I've been doing these streams this preseason. But there you go. At the top of the chat, the video is pinned up there for you. And that would explain, friends, tonight why we did not have the insane bump in viewers that we did around 645 on Tuesday. We were up over 370 viewers live at once on Tuesday. But tonight, ooh, well, we might just see that. We might uh, just saw that. We're up over 73. So potentially we might still see that crazy bump here on Dolany TV tonight. But folks, if you haven't already, the live stream link for the Oilers game is posted at the top of the stream chat here on Dolany TV. It's highlighted in blue on my screen. It might be some other color on yours. But it says and reads, watch live Oilers game and all you have to do is click the link, expand the chat, and away you go. So, friends, now it's official. Let's go enjoy a battle of Alberta, and let's get this going. I'm going to quickly kick over to EdmontonOilers.com, follow that link myself, and go really enjoy ourselves a hockey game between the Oilers and Flames, shall we? That sounds like a grand e idea, grandiose idea. What's, what's the phrasing I'm looking for? I don't know. You guys got to remember that I got to... Low 70 in high school English, so that's kind of tough, but we'll we'll matter we'll manage it through. So, folks, um, yeah, and that's that's the thing tonight. The Oilers are not icing an NHL lineup, and it appears the Flames will be icing a bit more of a veteran lineup from what these pregame interviews I'm seeing on my screen are looking like. Oh, which by the way, I got to turn on my audio. Hello, 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 hello. How to do that? Let's go here and, oh, maybe, there we go, unmute the audio on the television. Oh my goodness, <laughs> the old pregame. Okay, they got two audio, oh, um, okay, hold on, there we go, all right, we're good, we're good, we got this. We got this. We're rocking. We're rolling. All right, let me see if I can't uh, hit live and see if there's anything I'm missing. There isn't. All right, there we go. I am running dual monitors. That is the thing. I am running dual monitors, but I'm using my regular just basement television as my second monitor so as I can kind of stay fa forward facing and all that. But uh, friends, I think we got this figured out. The game is on. The game is already on. If you go click that link, the game is on and away we go. Um, the game will be on at 7 o'clock, so we got about 9 minutes to go before things really fire up. But yeah, they're just into the pregame Flames Amble right now, getting things set up on their end. But friends, welcome aboard. This is Dolany TV. We are 10 or less minutes away from the Edmonton Oilers starting to make a game of the first Battle of Alberta between these two teams featuring the pros. So hopefully things get going. One more time, I will just post this up. Uh, frequently over the next 10 minutes hopefully watch game here 
and hopefully we can crush things off because I know some of you might not have the chat above so hopefully this all sorts itself out and away we go tonight um yeah no it's all good friends and folks texting me already last uh last game out i had friends text texting me and snapping me pictures of my own stream that was pretty interesting to see hey you know what my good friends that i don't keep in touch with enough ends up um end up keeping tabs on me one way or another i've and it was fun to go back and forth a little bit about how much fun we had on that stream last night like or last uh on monday because Monday's stream, like I said earlier, was a top 10 live stream all time on Dolany TV. And uh, that's pretty impressive, folks. I, I will tell you, top 10 on Dolany TV is a hard place to crack, whether it be video or stream. And that's exactly what that stream managed to do. So that was pretty crazy, that's for sure. But um, yeah, we'll see what ends up happening. And we'll see what we can do tonight. Now, I am planning. I haven't let you guys know this yet, but I am planning to go two periods that's kind of the planned distance of the live stream tonight and then I should be able to do the uh, post game review as well it's just those eight o'clock games working a regular day job just don't work out Friday nights Saturday nights yeah no problemo but it's just that eight o'clock on a Wednesday eight o'clock on a Monday whatever it's tough it is really tough to try and get that together go to bed at 12 30 wake up drive 45 50 minutes to get to work, try and survive the morning rush, and then also try and get things going, that's for sure. So, um, yeah. And surprisingly not, I'm seeing this comment here. Surprisingly, the um, the Battle of Alberta game with goalie fight is not a um, crazy top 10 video of all time, I don't think. The actual video itself, I think, did better. If I go here... Um, is there a way to, I can do this? I can do this this way. Here, I'll list off. And this is actually a who's who of Dolany TV from back in the day is kind of the funniest part of all this, my friends. Is if I go list this all off, um, well, I'm just dipsy doodling on my phone. If you want to take the next uh, rest of the live stream to consider subscribing too and uh, hanging out and talking Oilers with us. We won't be live streaming every game, but we'll be talking Oilers as much as we possibly can day to day. So... If you want to stick around and talk Oilers with me, maybe consider subscribing and hanging out for the rest of the season. Things are looking good, so why not hang out and enjoy? So, number one live stream all time for me is a 43-minute live stream I did on the uh, 2017 MLB Home Run Derby. Then the All-Star Game follows up with 21,000 views from that year. Canada versus Finland, 2021 World Juniors live stream. I believe that was New Year's Eve. Follows up with 21,000 views, followed up by Sweden and Finland with 18,000 views from 2021. Then the 2017 Home Run Derby first attempt had 17,000 in 20 minutes, which is probably perhaps the best math ever. And then um, second to that, Canada versus Germany from 2021. And then Canada versus Czechia in 2022 in December had 8,600. And then you have Canada versus Czech Republic from 2021 when they were still Czech Republic is 8,600. And coming in right after that is the Oilers versus Kraken one and a half days ago, 8,600 views back then. And yeah, really, oh, actually, no, that is pretty much it. Then you got Finland versus Germany. And then you got Canada versus the United States in 2021 for the World Juniors Gold Game. And to round out the top videos with 5,000 or more live stream views, the Oilers versus Calgary Flames Battle of Alberta exhibition game in the bubble at Rogers Place way back in the day. So that's actually very, very interesting. So folks, welcome to the stream. I'm Tyson. This is Dolony TV. Um, if you're looking for that live stream link, I guess that's what you're actually probably here for. And I see the comments again popping up I will post it in the chat but it's also at the top of my live stream chat um, launch live game here I'll hand this on over to you guys right now is it's playing on the Oilers website tonight they've got the live video feed from the Calgary Flames Jumbotron and it's exciting to see kind of what they've got going on I, I actually like the Calgary Flames in-house presentation 
but it's uh, kind of weird in the fact of it's only, I believe, 720p streaming out of Calgary. So that's why it kind of looks old school quality and not so great is it's uh, it's got to match that old Jumbotron that they've got at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. I mean, that rings a butte. I mean, dump, but butte at the same time. And uh, the tough part there is just simply put, they don't have the Rogers Place technology we do. So keep in mind that the stream, as somebody mentioned, kind of looks old school and it very much will for the entire night. I guarantee you that. Now, the secondary thing to be had here is Oilers Nation is down visiting the Scotiabank Saddle Dome tonight, the website Oilers Nation. So we should see some great social content. So make sure to check on Twitter regularly to see the antics those folks are up to. And hopefully the Oilers can get things going tonight and get them rocking. So, folks, we at least eclipsed the 100 viewer mark prior to the game starting. So we must have been doing something right here on the live stream tonight. And we'll see what ends up happening the rest of the way home. We're not too concerned. Folks, we got 505 views on the stream so far with a 249 view duration. That's that's pretty stellar. Um, let me see. What is that? That's 2.8 times 505. Ooh, baby. That is so far 24 hours streamed on this stream in the span of 31 minutes. That's some pretty good numbers. Let's enjoy it. Let's kick back, sit back, and the Oilers game just about to start here in a matter of moments. It's uh, just going through the pregame preamble that goes on the Jumbotron, so it should be live in no time at all. I mean, that Winnipeg game, we tuned in pretty much bang on the dot. The Marcus Niemelainen goal had already gone in, and we had missed a minute and a half of play before I was live with the game here on Dolany TV, but tonight... Hopefully we're a little bit more on the ball because we've already got the live stream preloaded and we rock and we roll towards a big old goal at the end. Hopefully a win for this uh, understaffed Oilers lineup considering who they're going up against in Calgary. So folks, welcome aboard. I see everybody tuning in here tonight and uh, things are going rocking well. So if you want to tune in and check the top of my chat, you'll see a comment that says, watch live Oilers, and then on my screen at least, it gets cut off and it says G-A-M on my screen. That that says game. I promise you it says game. Go check it out, and uh, bang, you'll be able to watch tonight's Oilers game right there live on EdmontonOilers.com. It is, it is like I said, the Calgary Flames feed, so not to toot my own horn, but unless you're syncing it up with 630 Ched tonight, folks, unfortunately... We will not be able to have Oilers commentary on tonight's stream from the big boys. So if you want to hang out with the guy hooking you up with the link, I'd be dang honored to have you hang out with me. That is for sure. So let me minimize this graphic a little bit. Again, folks, for you just tuning in, if you hop over to the Oilers stream, they're getting things going on the Sea of Red in downtown Calgary. It's Dylan Holloway, Ryan McLeod, Warren Fogle, your top line for the Oilers tonight. Matthias Janmark, Devin Shore, Derek Ryan, your second line. Then you got Benson, McGillone, Vertanen, your third line. Esposito, McKaig, Petrov, your fourth line. Then you've got Murray, Barry, Nimalainen, Demers, Samarukov, and Kemp is your defense pairs. Picard and Skinner in net for you. I'm just kind of actually following this uh, Calgary Flames loading screen. Because I'm interested to see who all they've got in there. And it looks like they've got a who's who of the Flames in net. So here we go. The Calgary Flames opening sequence. And it's going to be brand new because you don't have Johnny and Monty this season. So there's got to be some new faces in there. That's for sure. And I'm interested to see what ends up happening. So let's see what we got going here. Um, do, 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 do. Um, watch, um, watch Oilers game here. Here we go. There's the link one more time for you folks. And just going to think, um, <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. All right, here we go. Uh, quickly, let's go over here and quickly go to that. We've got, what do we, I'm just trying to find the Calgary Flames 
line up. I'd like to know where that is for tonight, but I can't seem to find anything. And the latest tweet is from Waz at Oilers Nation. Oh, oh, hold, hold on, hold on. We got news here. We got news here. Um, nope, nope, nope. That's that's nothing. That's Tyson Hines. Um, come on, cap friendly. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. There is nothing. Nothing. Nothing there. So I can't seem to find the Calgary Flames lineup. We'll see it posted, I'm sure, to begin the game. But tonight, yeah, that's the big thing is just don't get hurt. And don't... Uh, oh, my friends. That is a good call. That is a good question. Sorry. Um, I just saw the comments here. I just tuned back to the stream. Uh, region locks. Region locks. Yes. Because it is streaming on the Oilers website officially, if you are not in the Northwest Territories, Alberta or Saskatchewan, you may actually be region locked out. Sorry, that is that is the problem. I totally blanked on that because everything prior to tonight has been on Oilers YouTube on an unlisted link. However, tonight this is a live Battle of Alberta feed coming via Flames TV to the Oilers.com website. So let me quickly check to see if we can find a website link for YouTube for this game. But I don't think there is, to be honest with you. I don't think there is if it's playing on the Oilers website directly on NHL.com slash Oilers. And yeah, so it does not look... Like there is a YouTube link tonight. Sorry, I did not even think about that. That is my bad. Um, okay, that would explain why we're still riding at 180 people live at once. And yeah, so it is live on the Oilers website tonight, which means you may very well, um, very well be region locked out. I apologize for that, folks. Yeah, that's... That does that makes a hundred percent sense. I did not think of region lock. I'll do my best to call the game. Hey, I'm no Jack and Bob, but I got enough experience that I can make something sound like something. I guess we'll see what happens. But my friends, welcome to Dolany TV. I'm sorry if I am as good as I uh, as it gets for your Oilers tonight. I apologize for that. Everything else has been nice and easy this uh, preseason so far. Man, we've had YouTube links unlisted. I just throw the link at the top of the channel. And it's good to go. And yes, the games have been on YouTube as an unlisted link. So they aren't public. They're just hidden on YouTube. And if you have the link, you're able to watch. And that's what I've been able to do so far this preseason is go to the Oilers website, get the unlisted link, copy it to my chat, post it in the chat, and away we went for the night. That's how things worked previously against the Jets and Kraken. However, tonight it's live streaming directly to the Oilers website so it may indeed be region locked it's jacob markstrom in net for the calgary flames this evening oh baby how much would i give for devin shore and Derek ryan to both score a goal tonight against jacob markstrom i would be lit up extremely happy about that if that were to be the case so again friends apologies that you may be region locked out for tonight's game hopefully I can do you some good service tonight and keep you informed on everything Edmonton Oilers. Um, but hopefully, we don't know. We don't uh, have anyone region locked out. I don't. I. I don't know if I've seen anything in the comments um, on the region lock, so we should be good to go. But uh, it's George Canyon still singing the anthem for the Flames all this time later. I remember going down to the first Flames game uh, I ever attended down here after I moved to Southern Alberta. I'm like, what, George Canyon's the singer? Is this a special thing? And then it turned out that he's the guy who does it 90% of the time. So I was actually quite shocked with that. However, my friends, um, yes, there's some good points being raised in the comments. Way too much for me to get to before the game starts. But um, yes, it's, it's tough. Eric, there is a photo of the two lineups. I just want to make note of that because that's one that I've been trying to get up here for the entire duration of the stream. There is a comparison of the two lineups for the Oilers. I can't seem to get that photo to transfer from my phone from Instagram over to my uh, streaming software on my computer for some reason. So hopefully, um, hopefully it just works. But 
All right, so um, the website is um, the website is not working. Okay, so that's 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 good to know that um, the website may not work. And what's with the ads? I'm not quite sure. You should only uh, you should have gotten an ad about I want to say five minutes ago. I ran one. So if you're just tuning in, you'll get an ad usually tuning in, and that'll be that. But folks, let's get this game going, shall we? Daryl Sutter waiting for the puck to drop on the Calgary Flames bench. We got ourselves a hockey game ready to get rocking. Puck drop just a few seconds away. Flames, Oilers, Battle of Alberta 2022-2023. Cumulative season begins for both these teams against each other. Only three regular season matchups. Hopefully seven playoff games with the Oilers coming out top, of course, in round two against the Calgary Flames this year in seven. Give me seven just to just to make sure my old ticker works. That's, that's a big thing, right? Like, give me seven for the uh, crazy antics of it. It would be absolutely fantastic. All right, anyway, let's get this going. The Calgary Flames, the Edmonton Oilers, puck is down. Ryan McLeod wins the face off the top line. McLeod, Holloway, and Fogel on the right side. The Flames quickly cut off a pass. One-timer across, shot goes wide of the net, and it's back to the near side boards. codry has got it there for the Flames. He'll bat it around the boards to Blake Coleman, who's going to look for a man open. He gets it at the blue line. The shot comes in. Picard steers it into the corner near side again. Up along the half wall, now to the point for the Oilers. They get it out of the zone. Holloway chasing it. He is and has been all preseason, whether it's the rookie games or that game against Winnipeg, been absolutely phenomenal at being Johnny on the spot right where the puck is at all times. So here we go. Hopefully he can continue to that tonight. However, the puck down to Calvin Picard in the Oilers zone. He kind of scrambles it up. Huberto in on the forecheck. Almost comes up with the puck. The Oilers, however, carry it forward. And now it's a two-man wide attack for the Oilers at the Flames blue line. They're turned back quickly and now it's turned around and back into the Flames offensive end. The Oilers defending against a Flames forecheck that's been coming hard and heavy so far early on in the first minute and 10 seconds of this hockey game. As the Oilers clear zone, I want to say, folks, if you are not in Alberta, Saskatchewan, or the Northwest Territories, you will unfortunately not be able to watch tonight's game, as far as I understand. That said, if you want to watch the game, go to the top of the chat. Right at the top of the chat, I have a sticker that says, Watch Live Oilers. If you go up there, you can watch the game on the Oilers website if you are in Alberta, Saskatchewan, or the Northwest Territories. Unfortunately, if you're not, as far as I understand, either you have to tune into the radio on 630 Ched, or I am as good as it is going to get for you this evening. So my friends, I wish you well. Hopefully we can come to an uh, amicable agreement and we can have ourselves a good hockey game. The Oilers, on an icing against the Flames, will line up to the right of Jacob Markstrom in the offensive end. Flames, however, win the faceoff. Nifty cut off there by Phil Kemp, pinching in on the D zone and now it'll be back to the blue line kept in swept in by Jake Vertanen offside however Jake Vertanen getting into his third preseason game I only watched the first period of the preseason game there the other night against the Kraken due to having some adult responsibilities to take care of on the Monday night and the Flames now fail a clear Benson back in on the forecheck he's been noticeable doing that all preseason long for the Oilers who are now starting up Take that first minute 10 from the Flames and work their next minute 10 offensive zone attacking in the Flames with a forecheck that's been pretty stellar so far after getting pounded in their own end for the first minute 10. So here we go. And that's the thing. If we can watch on the Flames uh, Flames channel that, I guess maybe that could work. Um, okay, if you guys are watching, you're watching in Ontario, okay. Hopefully it's not region locked. Like I said, go to the top of my chat and you can end up watching the game. I promise you. I promise you, you should be able to watch if you go to the top of my chat. From what everyone's saying in the chat, if you go up there, you should be able to watch tonight's game. I wish you well. And like I said, I don't want to keep you here. If you want to watch the game in peace, go for it. I'm just glad I could get you the channel link. Anyway, Calvin Picard freezes the puck. We've got a whistle at 17:32. the Oilers still shotless two and a half minutes into the game that kind of sucks and we'll see 
what we can come up with here. All right. And it's live on the team's websites. Absolutely. So you just have to go on over there. I think the only requirement based on what I'm seeing here is you might have to be in Canada. That sounds like it's the only thing. So maybe it's Dolany TV takes care of the international audience tonight and Canada takes care of the Oilers and Flames websites. Anyway, the Flames in on the attack after the face-off draw. They're looking to keep it in, and it's going to be two Oilers forcing it ahead. And then Derek Ryan got his stick tied up and unfortunately couldn't get things going. So now with 17-13 to go in the first period, and it's very nice to have time. The Kraken feed did not have time on the board. That looks like a big hit. I wouldn't be surprised if that was Marcus Niemelainen and in the corner laying another big hit on a Calgary Flames player. But so far, a little pitch and catch back and forth into offensive zone, offensive zone. Shot fired by Caudry, though, from the high slot. Swallowed up near the neck by Calvin Picard. And he's got his third shot of the game. And absolutely, the pinned link. I'm, uh, I'm telling you, the pinned link is where you want to go. Unless, from what I'm seeing, you're outside of Canada, my friends. Hopefully, everything works out and we rock and roll. Anyway, we've got still... A solid three quarters of the first period to go here between the Oilers and the Flames. And so far, so good for the Oilers. They really uh, haven't given up many good opportunities, but they also haven't quite gotten any good opportunities themselves. Now, Ryan McLeod, though, he's going to speed dangle into the zone and allow Dylan Holloway to accidentally take out Jacob Markstrom a little on purpose, maybe. That looked a little coincidental. But, um, yeah, nothing happening there as the Flames will work it out of their zone, move it to the neutral. Backlund can't hack it at the blue line, so he goes chasing into the Oilers' near side corner where it's picked up on a stick by Barry and moved ahead to Ryan McLeod, who fires a blind pass across into the neutral zone, and it's back into Flames' possession where they're going to cross the Oilers' blue line, chip it back into that near side corner. It's met there by Ryan Murray, who gets the defensive shrug on the shoulder and allows the Oilers to transition back into the neutral where the Flames once again pick it up. However, almost a turnover at the Flames' blue line off a skate. The Flames now back three on four, back the other way. Shot rebound goes off the pads of Picard and to the near wall where it's shot back in, back behind the net. Oilers retrieve it for a moment. The Flames forecheck, keeping the puck alive a few extra seconds. And it'll be Jake for 10 and retrieving it for the Oilers from the defenseman. And it'll be a board play right to the middle of the ice, looking to catch the... Goaltender Marks from skate note too far. Didn't work out. Not like David Riddick the other night. And, well, the Oilers see the Flames offside at their blue line. All right. Yeah, I, I do not have an, a solution for anyone that is outside of, um, outside of, um, what do you say? Outside of Canada. If you're not in Canada, I don't think you can watch tonight's game on the websites, unfortunately. That's the one thing. But again, as we just return to action, the Flames flip it in over the Oilers' blue line. If you're looking to tune in tonight's game, top link there. The Oilers, however, have something developing here. Turns out to be nothing quite quickly. And it's back the other way, and Milan Lucic of the Calgary Flames will move it ahead. The Flames push it into the far side corner where it's met there by an attacker and they're going to go around again. I don't have a clue who any of the Flames numbers are now that they've gotten rid of Johnny Gaudreau and Sean Monaghan, so couldn't tell you. However, Calvin Picard getting absolutely blasted here in the first five minutes of this hockey game. He's faced about seven shots and now he's got seven saves and he's looking good doing it. And it's going to be flipped out into the neutral again and the Oilers, um, Oilers aren't having too much luck getting an attack. Um, getting it going. So here we go. This one turned back. 14-21 to go in the first period. Seven shots officially on the board for the Calgary Flames. Early in this hockey game, Picard's been tested. The Oilers, only one shot. They can't seem to get pucks cleanly out of the zone. Now Warren Fogle behind his own net retrieves a puck and will try and get it out. Marcus Niemelainen's on there as well so he should be good to go he'll move it oh will fogel wearing the a again tonight for the oilers he'll be moved there to ryan mcleod who can't get it past the defenseman and now it'll be dylan holloway in on the attack shoot score nope oh he had that second look sorry he had that second look jacob markstrom looked behind himself even man that old 720p 
live stream can be really fooling sometimes. That was, I almost got really excited there. That was, that was tight. I, I thought that was a goal. That was a nice little look from Dylan Holloway and that little, little peeky boo by Jacob Markstrom moving the mask. Um, that, that scared me for a second. I thought we had it. However, we don't get it. It's a 0-0 game. That was tight. I thought the others had almost broken it open right away on only their second shot, and the Flames have been stymied by Calvin Picard to start, but not to be had. Whew. Okay, calm down. Relax. Regroup. 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 Get it back. Get it going. We'll be good to go here in a mere moment. And I mean, I don't mean to get overly excited about a preseason goal, but watching Dylan Holloway just do Dylan Holloway things all preseason, it's been phenomenal. So, unfortunately, uh, I am going to get a little excited about things, that is for sure. Anyway, this uh, they're just showing Calgary Flames highlights here as we're on commercials, so I'm just going to throw you guys an ad. Let me know if you get an ad. Let me know if it's an annoying ad or something, because... I'll try and dial back the ads as the night goes on. I just want to make sure those are working. And if you get them, let me know, and we should be good to roll, folks. Other than that, if you're enjoying the stream so far, I'm going to ask you if you want to sit back and enjoy more Oilers talk. The streams aren't something I want to do regularly this season. It's just something I want to bring a service, kind of get you directed to where you can watch the Oilers tonight uh, via me kind of deal. But um, in the preseason, if you want to subscribe for Oilers Talk, though, there's plenty of content over the course of my career here on YouTube, whether it be Oilers or hockey or anything related. So if you want to check that out. And for the time being right now, too, as we head to the later half of this first period, we're going to have a discussion here on the Oilers defenseman. MN right there. If you want to check out that YouTube link. All right. Um, yeah. Top NHL players and doing decent. He he makes the team this year. Oh, absolutely. Dylan Holloway, whether he makes the team based on cap purposes or he makes the team based on anything else, he makes the team to start this game. Anyway, the Flames back on the attack. Shot from the dot. Swallowed into the chest. Once again, a Calvin Picard who has been absolutely stellar Obviously against an NHL lineup in the Calgary Flames tonight. 8-3 the shots for the Flames early in this first period. And that's good to see for the Oilers that Calvin Picard's goaltending well. I do wonder if Stuart Skinner will, because of the Flames lineup, get into the game either to start the second period or to start the third period or midway even through the second period. I could not tell you, but I do expect Stuart Skinner because of the lineup to start at some point in this game. However, just seeing this here as the Oilers are moving around, that will not be a penalty. No, no arm up. The Oilers touch up the puck. So they avoid a trip in the defensive zone and now they'll move things out. Demers dumps off there at the blue line and allows Ryan McLeod to carry in on the attack. He'll go into the near side corner, get crunched there by the Flames. Literally, I mean crunched. That looked like uh, practice where Luke, uh, sorry, Kane and uh, Demers there were crunching them along the boards at the bench, but that does uh, that does kind of look like it hurt there for McLeod. He got crunched up against the glass pretty hard. However, it doesn't matter as the Oilers in the defensive zone going to chip it out. Dylan Holloway, nifty little play, allows Ryan McLeod to touch center, dump it into Jacob Markstrom. The Flames continue to lead in the shot department, 8-3. The shot clock says 12-27. And we've got just over half a period to go in which the Flames, they've been on the attack a lot more. And there is shot number nine of the period. A nice little tuck of the glove there by Calvin Picard to keep that puck out of the net. And you have got yourself the ninth shot of the game for the Calgary Flames. The Oilers not really getting much going so far on the attack, but eventually they'll get things turned around. And hopefully... We get things rolling. Am I able to watch the game? Yes. Okay, so this is uh, the, the lengths I go to to make sure my friends can watch the Oilers do not just involve YouTube. I, I do uh, take DMs and Snapchats and stuff from everybody. As Calvin Picard is getting absolutely worked over in net by a Flames attacker in his blue paint. The puck now coming to the near side boards and the Oilers a little bit scrambling around here. I'll wait to uh, deal with this chat but uh yes i am but it's a canada thing i think there you go bingo good to go anyway the oilers 
Back in the possession of the puck, Phil Kemp dumps it in. He'll get things rolling back behind the net. The Oilers meet it there at the far side boards. Flames, though, get it back into the neutral, and it's a one-on-two, developing into a two-on-two. Chip it to the open ice, looking for the rebound. Almost had it. Was one of, I think, 21 for the Flames. He passes right to the middle, and it will be dead puck because it looks like there will be an interference call against the Edmonton Oilers coming up. And... Yep, it will be an interference call for a two-minute penalty against the Oilers with 11.28 to go in the first period. Unfortunate call there. That really sucks. The Oilers could have really crushed things there if they could have maybe changed momentum, but maybe a good penalty kill. The Oilers have not had bad penalty kills so far as I have watched in the preseason, so I'm looking forward to them hopefully keeping that going right now. And friends, I just see the viewers again fluctuating quite a bit. If you go to the top of this chat, if you're in Canada, you can watch tonight's live stream on the Oilers or Flames website. Derek Ryan chips it across on the penalty kill, though. And Devin Shore right on cue. Like I said, if him and Ryan could hook up for a couple goals, that would be sweet. He had a good look, but Markstrom up to the save. And the Oilers kill off 20 seconds of the Flames power play before they even cross the offensive blue line. That was a good look. You love Derek Ryan and Devin Shore just simply because of their PK prowess for the offense. And now we're already down half a minute on the PK without the Flames even registering a shot. Shot comes in, tipped up over top of the net. Calvin Picard looking for it. It's in the near side corner. Flames come back into the slot. Now back to Rasmus Anderson at the blue line. He walks it. Now across to the far side wing. Shot tipped in front. Caudry misses in front. Shot there looking for the rebound. Misfired by Jonathan Huberdeau who has already got a goal or two in this preseason. Another chance for Huberdeau. It goes off a stick and through his skates. And the Oilers cleanly kill off the first minute of the penalty. But this one, a clean zone entry. Shot fired, save, cards down. Oh, and the rebound again, fired wide by the Flames. They've missed some key shots here on this power play. Huberto back to the blue line. Shot fired, goes off the end boards again. And this one will be fired through the crease. And now back to Huberto on the near side boards. He's looking back to Hannafin. Shot coming in. Nope, Hannafin's going to reload. And look again, walk the Flames using their time. This camera, they could just zoom out and solve their twitchy problems. Another miscue, bad pass from the Flames. 20 seconds to go here in this power play to open up the first period. We're now done a minute. Oh, well, done, uh, sorry. Done a half a period of this hockey game. And it'll be all the way back down to Jacob Markstrom, who will just scurry it back behind his own net. That's it. For the Calgary Flames power play. So 9.26 to go in the first period. And I think the Flames just deflated a little bit of their momentum. And the Oilers could potentially capitalize here if they can get the skates a turning. And that's what it's looked like they're trying to do. Dylan Holloway in on the attack into the near side corner. He's going to scramble up a puck. Jason Demers down there pinching, looking for the puck. Brad Malone pushing for it as well. He can't come up with it. It was, I believe, Malone, Holloway, and... Uh, Jake Vertanen to open the Winnipeg Jets game, and the only guy on that line you noticed was Dylan Holloway. He was an absolute monster. However, 8.51 to go. Shot miss cue again on the one-timer from the Calgary Flames. The Oilers biting a lot of lucky chances here early on. Miscues from the Flames. 13 shots still for the Flames. Imagine if they were hitting the net. They could have 20 easy. Shot comes in, bobbles off of a couple guys in front, goes into the corner. And it's 8.32 left in this first period in a scoreless hockey game. 13 shots on net versus the Oilers 4. And it's a man pushed down in the neutral zone. Allows possession to go back into the Flames. And in control for Nikita Zadorov, who will chip it around the boards. And get it over to his teammate. Carrying it over to the zone and leaving it across the neutral to get to the Oilers blue line. Tucked there by Philip Kemp and kept out of the Oilers end. Back into Flames territory. Knocked down there was uh, number 15. Who's we're number 15 this year? Tough call. I can't even remember. Anyway, we'll carry on. As Phil Kemp moves it in. And it's just a quick tidy shot towards the net off a deflection. Goes into the corner. And the Oilers trying to keep the pressure up off the glove of Phil Kemp in the neutral zone. Flames flick it in. And it'll be met there by Samarukov, who niftily 1-2 head fake. 
and the Oilers back in possession and out of their own end very quick. That was the problem in the first minute and 10 seconds. They just could not transition out of the zone, but the Flames making it very tough on the young Oilers to get over their blue line and into the attacking end. The Oilers, though, keeping pucks alive, just making the Flames kind of earn getting out of their own end, and here's now Devin Shore running into a puck. He's got an opportunity to keep this puck alive. He does. Tyson Berry near side point. Plays it on down. It's going to go back to Devin Shore who goes off of the boards or stick. And it somehow bobbles right to Jacob Markstrom who will freeze that puck for a whistle as the Flames just could not seem to get out of their own end early in this first game or first period of action. 7.03 to go. It was an interesting goal, that is for sure. Anyway, friends, we've got ourselves a good period of hockey shaping up. Calvin Picard's look good so far. The Oilers need to do more to get over the Flames' blue line cleaner, but it's been good to see so far that the Oilers haven't quite given up so far. So, again, friends, if you want to go to the top link there, it says Watch Live Oilers Game is uh, what it should say. You click on that link. If you're in Alberta... Anywhere in Canada, you should be able to watch. If you're in the U.S., anywhere else in the world, you're not going to be able to watch, unfortunately, tonight. And that kind of sucks, but hopefully things get going. So, anyway, let's get things rocking tonight as quickly as I see. A lot of you have tuned over to that Marcus Niemelainen video that I did last night. I appreciate you folks tuning into that. That was a nice little discussion, right? You actually get to talk about a guy who looked good last year, comes into camp and does nothing but look good and create headlines for himself. And that's what main training camp's all about, right? You want to create good press for yourself. And that's what Nima Linen's done. And for a guy that's been around as long as he has, it feels really good to see that kind of action. That's for sure. Anyway, I want to see this uh, tweet about that Blue Jays fan. Um, let's see what ends up going on. All rise, Aaron Judge ties history and just watched probably a million dollars plus slip out of their hands. Wow, a Blue Jays fan just about caught the crazy Aaron Judge 61st home run ball, and he dropped it. <laughs> Oof, that hurts. That really sucks. Anyway, friends, let's get back to the game. We're just about there. I'm going to throw you an ad quickly, and then we'll get back to hockey action as the Oilers see the Flames carry it over the blue line. The backhand chip towards Calvin Picard goes wide. Back to the blue line. Zdorov keeps it in. And it'll be back down where Jason Demers has to work his man over to get, um, to, get to get things going. And this will get back. And Ryan McLeod crosses the blue line. The shot comes in. And that will not be effective for the Oilers, unfortunately. And now, let's see... Ryan McLeod, though, miscues off a one-time pass right top of the crease. Warren Fogle over the corner almost had him. The Flames turn it back into their possession, and they're going to try and get things going here. 6.25 to go in this first period of play. The Oilers now up to five shots. Somehow, luckily, credited with five shots. Mackenzie Weger on the ice for the Calgary Flames, and he will bat it down all the way into the Oilers' end. Tyson Berry, strong, astute. Board play there, gets the puck, well, out of danger, I guess you could say, but the Flames regroup it at the blue line, get it into Hubert O's possession, down on the near side boards, it'll be chipped off the stick of Derek Ryan, who goes down to Matthias Janmark, leaves it there for Tyson Berry on the near side, half wall, and it's up to Jason, uh, or Devin Shore, sorry, to get that puck across to the D-man and up and out. However, the Oilers, nifty play. Devin Shore in flight. He's going to dipsy doodle back and around the net. He's going to try to play it to the side of the net. Yanmark can't cash it. Phil Kemp goes back to Yanmark. That creates a little miscue between two flames. And now you got a chance for the Oilers to extend a possession here. Derek Ryan scrambling for that puck. It's three flames, two Oilers. And it goes back to that fourth trailing flame going behind the net to puck, pick up that puck. I can tell it's getting late in the first period. I need a break from this play-by-play. -play. And the flames, how about this? Not such a clean zone entry. They keep possession, and that's going to allow the Oilers to have to set up camp in their defensive zone to try and get this puck out. Samarukov up to the task. Yes, he is, but it's going to be... A nice and call against a, well, defensive line that's been out there a little bit longer than I think you'd like on an ice and call in this position. 
However, it is what it is, and we'll battle through, and we'll get it going. So, my friends, what do you think? It's been all right. Not a bad first period from what I think I've described. I think the Oilers just would like to try and drive the puck to the net a little bit more. Ryan McLeod had that puck go off his skate. He just narrowly missed it, but hopefully the Oilers can keep this goose egg going in the score column against the Flames as long as possible because, I mean, the less shots you have and the more you get, the more you're likely to get one. And hopefully that's the case here for the Oilers. Nifty pickup by Jake Vertan in there. Great play, and now the Oilers in on the attack, trying to zoom into the zone. It goes beyond the Flames' net, however, after a little bit of a scramble. It's going to go back to the blue line. Played across there, and it goes to absolutely nobody. And Greg McKaig is number 15 for the Edmonton Oilers. That's who it is. We just figured that out based on having Benson and uh, Vertanen on the line as well. The Oilers trying to keep this puck alive in the offensive zone. Met Bay Petrov now out there for the Oilers. Looking to get his first preseason action, and it will come all the way to the blue line. Up and out, and Marcus Niemelainen quickly gathers it there. The man, the myth, the legend himself, the hammer time kind of player that has been uh, the story of the Oilers blue line so far this preseason as he's played all three games and looked very good alongside Dylan Holloway who's now on the ice he gets out battled there for a puck but it's back into Oilers possession before the Flames could even really see it come out of the zone and 339 to go in this first period the Flames doing their best to try and vacate the zone and get away from the dangerous attacker that is Dylan Holloway a chip there by Tyson Berry to try keep that Sorry, that's not Tyson Berry. That was Ryan Murray alongside Tyson Berry. Their defending works, and the Oilers are up out of the defensive zone into the attacking zone. Again, Dylan Holloway trying to chase down a puck. How about this? Right back to the blue line. Tyson Berry fires a shot, and it's saved by Jacob Markstrom. Held on to, and we will have a whistle and a face-off to Markstrom's left. <sighs> you believe that? Not a bad first period at all. I don't think, anyway. Hey, it's this guy again. This guy's still there. Interesting. Didn't know this guy was still around doing the flame stuff. I guess they kept him on for another season. And, um, yeah, here we go. Let's see what's going on on Instagram. Hey, hey. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm not sure what's on my television screen right now. Sure, there's exciting characters at the Saddle Dome, sure. However, I think the big thing I'm looking forward to, just as we're on commercial break here in the Flames game, quickly is I would love to tell you that I'm probably going to go check out the Coachella Firebirds when the Calgary Flames uh, Wranglers Club, the AHL team, plays their first game at the Saddle Dome on October 16th. I think that's my plan, is I'm going to go hang out and watch the... Um, watch the... Uh, Watch the Firebirds, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm going to do. Because why would I be watching the Wranglers? Oilers fan go to the AHL Flames Arena to watch the Flames AHL team play? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. All right, let's get this going. All right, enough ambling. Let's just get... Oh, no, we're going we're gonna to have one more thing here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this, the, the tacky Calgary Flames... Jumbotron stuff. Love it. Love it. At least at least they are they're having fun, right? That's what counts. That's what counts. Okay, let's get this going, folks. Back to it. And Sam, good to see you. I think I think you kind of caught my little chuckle there at the message. Anyway, make some noise. Well, I'm I'm not gonna make any noise. I'm gonna go get another cup of water in five minutes. That's what I'm gonna do. It's been a long first period, folks. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would love it if you could. We are closing in heavy on that ten thousand mark or however. Let's get back to hockey. Calvin Picard, a quick save right off the face-off. All the way from the Flames end, they transition across the neutral to the offensive zone to snap in the shot, and Tyler Toffoli is denied on shot number 14 of the period for the Calgary Flames, who started out just blistering shots on Calvin Picard and have since slowed down, but it's the big thing here. It's the young Oilers, it's the rookie Oilers, it's the veteran Oilers, it's the depth Oilers that really aren't huge roster pieces going to town against this veteran Flames lineup and holding them in a bay so far 
early on in this one, but here's a dipsy doodle move there that didn't work on the spin around or for the Flames. The Oilers retrieve the puck in their own zone, chip it off the boards, but not exactly sure where that one's going. It's a turnover at the blue line for Jason Demers, who almost sees himself get beat bad enough to have a backdoor tap in on the back skate of his goaltender. Flames still in possession in the offensive zone and they can't seem to come up with that one on the near side boards Derek Ryan a good little puck retrieval and it'll be head man to head to Dylan oh no that's Matthias Yamark I, I saw some kind of crooked number there and I'm like oh that's Dylan Holloway because he's Johnny on the spot all the time couldn't get it going and it'll be chipped back into Oilers possession in their defensive end Phil Kemp moving this puck ahead he'll see it chipped there by Jake Vertanen to Brad Malone, who's chasing down a puck. Vertanen, though, gets in the way. Uh, nope, Malone gets in the way. Shocker there. I missed cued where the puck was. And it's going to go up and out of play. And it looks like Solovoyov is trying to fight one of the Oilers. Jake Vertanen mixing it in there. Sutter's in there as well. And nobody's really getting things going too, too hard here. As I think it's just a couple cordial meetings here. Tyler Benson and Jake Vertanen talking it up with... Um, with the Edmonton Oilers uh, rival players on the ice, Calgary Flames. Can we kind of see I'm losing my touch? It's just literally when you're doing the play-by-play -play this long and you're watching a TV feed and you don't have natural progressions within an arena, it's kind of hard to keep everything together in the brain. And that's kind of what I'm struggling from, but we'll battle through. Trust me, we will. We will get through into this second or first intermission, second period, and then we'll try and carry through for the second intermission as well and see how that goes. 1.57 to go here in this first period, and the Oilers setting up an attack after a face-off win. And look at this. They're darting around the offensive zone trying to keep it alive. There is Dylan Holloway in on the attack. Ryan McLeod keeping a puck alive briefly. It's going to get into Oilers' possession at the blue line, and the Flames get it out. So now back the other way, the Flames. Milan Lucic in on Phil Kemp. Hard rattle into the boards. Back to the blue line of the Oilers' zone. It's chipped all the way down. Goes way wide. Buck 27 to go here in this first period. As the Oilers' Dylan Holloway is in flight. He's held up. But Ryan McLeod, a nice follow, keeps that puck alive. Chipped through a couple of guys, and it'll be turned back the other way. Lucic hard skating, chugging along the steam engine going, trying to get the coal fired through the incinerator as fast as possible. Couldn't get it going, so now the Flames see it turned back into Oilers' possession, back in their own defensive end, where the Oilers will chip this one ahead to the offensive blue line. And Greg McKaig couldn't get it going, so the Flames back the other way with 50 seconds to go. The Oilers, though, just doing a beautiful job, making it hard in the second half of this period for the Flames to enter the offensive zone as the Oilers have picked up steam in the offensive zone. And, well, now a freeze there as a puck directed goes miscuing all the way to Jacob Markstrom, who just hops on it for a whistle. 39 seconds to go in this first period. 13-8 the shots, my friends. We are having ourselves a good little period of hockey, that is for sure. And now we are just moments away from this period wrapping up and finishing things off. Here's a chance tucked forward and up and out. And it'll be played, no, right to Derek Ryan on the spot of finding that puck. He gets kind of tangled up with a man, but it's good support there by Matthias Janmark, who now battles with a couple of flames to keep that puck going. And there's a chance there for Devin Shore, who will just wrist her down along the boards. Back to the blue line. Now Jason Demers fires a shot that I don't know where that was going, but there was a lot of bodies in front that could have touched it and had it go into the net. It didn't. Six seconds to go in the first period. Dive time here. And the others are going to see Jason Demers fire this one across and in the middle of the ice picked off. And that, my friends, will do it for the first period of hockey between the flames and and Oilers tonight at the Saddle Dome live on Dolany TV. Whew, I need a second to breathe. The shots on goal for the Flames, 13 to the Oilers, 8. The face-off percentage in flavor of the Oilers, 56%. Who knows what any other stats are because all they care about is showing that there was a 0-0 in the goal column tonight on the first period summary. So there you go. We're back to the Sea of Red graphics. Folks, I'm going to head upstairs quickly, grab a cup of water, grab a refill, uh, grab a granola bar, and quickly grab myself a break as well. I'll be right back. Thank you for tuning in. Folks, stay tuned.
All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, let's get this going, folks. Back to it. Let's get this Oilers game summarized so far. Uh, well, what have we seen out of our Edmonton Oilers tonight? Quite simply, the Oilers have been battling hard. They've been doing well. Um, doing things the right way. Playing hard-nosed hockey against a veteran lineup. And doing a really good job trying to not screw up, I guess you could say. Doing a really good job just not costing yourself a goal. And for the Oilers, they've done all right so far, I guess you could say that's for sure. So, hopefully... That continues. I think here's the thing. Um, if you're to try and summarize how um, how you um, how um, how how do I put this? If I try to summarize what I'm about to say here, it's not that any one Oilers looked impressive, but it's not that any one Oilers looked bad. It's just it's been that team effort. Right? It's been that team effort for the Oilers where they try to just avoid getting beat by a much better on paper lineup, right? And I mean that's that's why I think as I'm trying to summarize how to say this, is that's why I think Derek Ryan, Matthias Yanmark, and Devin Shore have been very noticeable tonight, is because they as NHL role players know what they have to do against a lineup like the Flames are icing, if that makes sense, right? Obviously, to me, I think that line's been in on the forecheck, creating turnovers, keeping pucks alive, do, doing the things that we love if Derek Ryan, Devin Shore, and Matthias Janmark want to do for us this year. They want to do that. We are all for it. So that's where I really think they've done a great job, great job of doing it for us. But that's why they're noticeable. It's not because they're scoring goals, creating chances. It's just in a game where you're trying to stalemate the Flames and really work on defensive preventative hockey as opposed to, thank you as opposed to offensive attacking hockey and potentially getting oak gunned by a much better offensive lineup in the Calgary Flames right they've got Huberto they've got Kadri they've got all their big guys in there Blake Coleman so you're just trying not to get oak gunned which in terms of everything means big time defensive hockey, Devin Ryan, or Devin Shore, Derek Ryan, so this is very loud, and I'm not sure why they're screaming, and uh, Matthias Janmark, that's where they're going to shine, and that's what they're doing, right? They're in the offensive zone, creating havoc, holding up the play, stymieing in the flames, getting out, and the other lines have done it as well, but it's nice to see the guys that should do that, doing that the right way, and making it hard on veteran NHL players that they're going to face this season in the NHL. So that's that's really all I'm trying to say there. Now, friends, I just had a comment there in the chat asking about Marcus Niemelainen. But before we get to that, I want to cover off, if you want to watch tonight's game, as long as you are somewhere in Canada, if you are anywhere in Canada, as far as everybody's kind of told me early on in the stream, you can watch tonight's stream by going to the top of the chat where my name is in the top of the chat. It says, watch live Oilers, and then it has comma game feed. What you want to do is just simply go there, and that's a colon, Tyson, English. Um, you want to go there and click the link. Make that chat bigger, click the link, go watch the game. If you're outside of uh, Canada, you're in the U.S., you're in Europe, you're in Asia somewhere. I've had friends, say, from the Philippines as well. Uh, tough go. Is, I think it's region locked to all of Canada tonight, unfortunately. So, here we go. Um, I hope that explains it for... For folks tuning in is it's um this is just more or less me providing you thoughts analysis amateur play-by-play -play of the game if you can't watch or it's me directing you to where the game is because you are trying to find it and you don't have an answer guess what if you're in canada i've got your answer it's at the top of the chat you're good to go go enjoy the game it's the flames feed not the oilers feed that kind of sucks but hey if you want some Oilers commentary, either sync up 630 Chad or stick right here with me and we'll hopefully talk enough Oilers that it's worth your time. Secondary to that, friends, if you appreciate having the link sent to you, all I'm asking is consider sticking around to all any TV to listen to more Oilers talk. The streams, I don't like doing the streams as much as I like sitting down, talking straight Oilers for a 10-minute mini 
soundbite podcast kind of thing where all I'm trying to do is make one point and quickly get the video over with and get you back on with your day. Just enough Oilers news, just enough Oilers thought and opinion and really do that. So if you could consider hitting the subscribe button, stay in tune for all things Oilers throughout the season here on Dolany TV. I'd be greatly appreciative and secondary to that, friends, we're closing in. Whether I like it or not, this is the stupid part. I just realized last night that I'm less than 1,200 subscribers away here on Dolany TV from 10,000. So, again, that's pretty special and pretty crazy to me. And, I mean, your help in that would be absolutely phenomenal. So, uh, Nima Linen thoughts. I'm going to leave that there for you in the chat. I don't want to try and sum it all up. He's been very good. He's been noticeable, and he's been doing some great things here for the Oilers. But if you're looking for thoughts on Niemelainen, I've got a whole video from yesterday, 10 minutes and like 7 seconds, about just what I've thought he's been impressive, what he's done right, and why I'm really excited to continue to see him do things right for the Oilers this season. So... A first period where the Oilers really didn't do much. It was kind of ho-hum a lot of the way through, but a good defensive hockey. There was that one really good Dylan Holloway chance where Jacob Markstrom looked behind him. You can you can talk about it, but again, with Dylan Holloway, him getting a good look, making the goalie think twice, that's, that's just kind of come run of the mill here this season already. So it's not like we're talking about Dylan Holloway scoring a hat trick in the first period. So that's why I'm almost not even noticing him. However, the game has already started, folks. If you're just tuning in, the game started at 7 o'clock Mountain Time, so 6 p.m. Pacific and 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, we're already through the first period. Shots on goal, 13 to 8 for the Flames, 56% faceoff percentage for the Oilers, and the Flames are out hitting us 8 to 5, so it hasn't been an overly physical affair so far. Now, let's quickly... See if we can't get something else in here. Quickly summarize. I want to send this th your way as well. Just uh, the Dylan Holloway post-game review from game uh, game one of the preseason. Unfortunately, with adult responsibilities and having to be ready for work in the morning, I did not have time to do the post-game after the Kraken game. However, uh, Jets post-game preseason game one I'll link that as well in case you're looking for something to kill the intermission and you don't want to listen to me just ramble on about nothing um, that'll be good and again folks um, the link to the stream tonight is at the top of my chat if you're in the chat and you're asking hey where is the stream to the uh, game just go where it says watch live Oilers click on that it's an NHL.com link I promise you it is 100% legit. It's the Edmonton Oilers website. Go there, click it. You are good to go. You can watch the Flames Oilers game as long as you're in Canada. I promise you I am not trying to scam you. I'm not trying to do anything weird. I am just acting tonight as your gateway to watch the Edmonton Oilers. That is all I am trying to do. So, my friends, that is where we are at with the live stream. And again, I'm sorry if you, like, I feel like I've probably got about 70 people sticking around for this full game. I apologize for you that have stuck with me this whole entire time. If it's kind of annoying to have to listen to me repeat myself, that is kind of the nature of the business here in the preseason, as far as I've kind of found out, is i got to repeat myself as new people come in. Uh, folks, as, as you might have noticed, and I'll explain this one right now, we have already crossed 5,000 views on the live stream today. We're up over 5,320 views on the live stream, which means quite a lot of people have been tuning in, in and out as the night goes along, which means fresh people every minute. And honestly, the lowest viewed minute I've had on my channel this hour is 24 views, which means 24 people tuning in and out of the live stream at once. So that kind of that kind of sucks for the folks that want to stick around the stream. But again, to the folks that um, want to sit down and hang out with me, I appreciate you doing it. And to the new folks, we will get you going. So, anyhow, um, what we... Uh, ah, okay. So, I see there are... Um, there are blackouts potentially in Vancouver is what I'm seeing. 
Uh, what I've heard, and this is kind of what I'm seeing, if you're just joining the stream, because I, I know at the end of the first period, we were down to 102 people and we're back up at 188. Um, I believe the thing was, as far as I know, across Canada, you can watch the game tonight. But beyond that, I don't, um, I don't know anything other than that. It's, it's as far as I know, Canada wide. If it is region locked, as far as I know, it would be Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Northwest Territories as who would be able to watch. So that's, that's my thought there. But I guess we'll get back to the review of the first period just simply because I have a whole bunch of new people tuning in. Hi, I'm Tyson. This is Stall Indie TV. Nice to meet you. Let's talk about that first period and what you might have missed if you're just joining the stream. It was a ho-hum first period. Good defensive struggle from both teams. The first 10 minutes, the Flames really made it tough on the Oilers trying to cross the offensive blue line, right? The Oilers would get it in, puck would bobble behind the net, Markstrom or a defenseman would play it, it'd kind of bobble around the zone, and it'd be back out into the Oilers' end quickly enough. However, that second half, the Oilers clamped down. They were more physical in the offensive zone, just bumping and kind of grinding the puck away from the Flames, creating a bit more chaos. And they, in turn, then made it harder on the Flames to cross their blue line. And it kind of added up to the Oilers shifting the momentum a little bit more in their favor as the period wore on in the final 10. So that was good to watch. But if you're kind of asking yourself, who, who do you think in the first period really stuck out? In this kind of game, that's where you see Devin Shore, Derek Ryan, and Matthias Janmark, and the little things that make them valuable to an NHL lineup kind of shine through, right? That bump of the puck, that extra stick work, that get on the attack and just make something out of nothing attitude that you've got to have when you're not a Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl, right? you got to just kind of create opportunity where there shouldn't be. Make the opposition make a mistake, and that's what they were doing well in that first period, was just kind of making the Flames work that extra five seconds in the defense zone. Make them miss a pass, whatever it was. Dylan Holloway had a beautiful shot. I almost jumped out of my chair thinking he had scored. However, it was indeed actually just Jacob Markstrom thinking the puck had got past him, and I'm like, oh my God, it's a goal, but no. Rain back, it was not a goal. It was just Jacob Markstrom was a little nervous that he'd gotten beat by the hot shot kid. All right, Flipper Do, it's uh. It's kind of a mad game. Yes, that's what I'm kind of summing up here. It's very ho-hum. And, friends, if you want to uh, tune in, we'll, uh, we'll tell you at the top of the chat, as we have 200 folks back in the stream, hello, howdy. Um, top of my chat, if you go into the Oilers stream chat here on this channel, uh, you can see there is a blue highlighted chat that says, Watch Live Oilers. And I'm actually going to remove that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that right now. So just hold on a second. And I'm going to put a new chat in here to pin. Okay. Link to game is what I'm going to say. How about that? We make it real simple. Link to game. Let's go there. And let's go there. And let's do this. There we go. Does that work out more for you, friends? Replace pinned message. And there we go. Bingo. Hit the nail with the head. We're flying. There we go. You can see it there. Link to game is at the top for you. Let's do this and let's get this going. All right, friends, we're back on it. Let's get this game off and running the second period. Ready to rock and roll. We've killed the time. Let's do the time now. 20 minutes on the board. Oilers, Flames, period number two, live from the Saddle Dome in the heart of Calgary. Let's get it going. But hold on, the referees are going to sit there and stare at the guys as they wait to drop the puck. I guess they got to stop the on-ice animations and stuff. I, I get it. There's showmanship. The puck's on edge at center ice waiting for things to go. Does the NHL logo have to be blue or purple for it to be a frozen puck? I don't know. However, the referee scoops it up. Devin Shore's going to draw in. And that, my friends, means Nazem Qadri's ready to rock and roll too. And we are ready to rock and roll a second period between the Flames and Oilers. Flames win the faceoff. They're going to move this into the offensive zone, but it's batted quickly at the blue line into the Oilers or Flames bench. We have a whistle just six minutes in 
as they will reskate things around. All right. That was a quick whistle to start this first bit of action, I guess you could say. I wouldn't even call that action. It was a face-off, and then there was a whistle immediately after. However, the Oilers win the second face-off of the period, and they just chip it down into the flames end, and here they come hard on the attack. It's again Yanmark, Shore, and Ryan chip to the front of the net, and all kinds of traffic in there. Chipping on the backhand was Derek Ryan, but it is indeed Mr. Jacob Marks from freezing up that puck with 19.40 to go here in this second period. The shot's 13-9 for the Flames, and we've had two whistles within 20 seconds of this period opening. Not too uh, not too good of a start, I guess you could say, for the Oilers. If you want to help, here's, here's this old couple enjoying, um, enjoying the Jumbotron. And 19.36 to go in this second period as the puck's back into action. It's all the way down the ice. Not nice and call. The Oilers are going to dump it off there. Chip it up the boards. But it's Jason Demers again with a costly turnover in the offensive zone for the Flames. They're back on the attack. Shot comes in. Bobbles into the corner. It's picked up by Huberto on the far side wing. He's working, dancing around. Back to Toffoli. Toffoli's going to go back down into Blake Coleman's stick, I believe, or is that uh, somebody else? I don't know. Anyway, Rasmus uh, Anderson picks up that puck. Calvin Picard looking around, trying to figure out what he's going to do. He runs into Warren Fogle, and it'll be chipped ahead by Ryan McLeod, who almost sprung him and Dylan Holloway, and now Jason Demers is going to chip it out in the neutral, tipped there by an Oilers stick, back to the Flames blue line. It's worked there by Stone, who I think is still on a PTO with the Flames. Picard will play it off the boards. It'll go up out of the blue line again, back into the neutral for the Flames possession, where Trevor Lewis, number 22 of the Calgary Flames, comes into that puck, and it skates around behind the net, and now back to the blue line. Michael Stone there with it. He'll rip another shot deflected back the other way. The puck comes 18-26 into the Flames zone, and it will be... Into Flames possession, back into middle alleys, and turned back onto the stick of Milan Lucic, who just uses his body to shield the puck. The Flames get it, shoveled it into the Oilers' end. Calvin Picard, who was sharp in that first period, now gets it ahead to the defenseman, tipped in by Tyler Benson. Jacob Marks remote to play it, a little bit of a scramble in the near side corner by the four checking Oilers. Flames yet again come up with it, and back the other way we go. Sam Rukov can't stop his man at the line after the chip. And that'll allow the Flames to get possession in the Oilers' end. But worked out there, Greg McKay giving chase against Zadorov. Uh, Zadorov falls down after twining himself into the boards. And it'll be chipped there as that's going to be a penalty. And then there's going to be something else going on at the end of the play. As Matvey Petrov draws a penalty trying to pick up a puck in the middle of the ice. He bites an edge going into the boards piled on top of by a Flames defenseman. And he will go to the box for that one. And Petrov, uh, you like to see, that is the most dangerous open the Neuler has been all night outside of Dylan Holloway. And it's Petrov that gets that play. And look at that, he gets taken down right out of the way. McLean then runs him into the end boards. Not really a malicious hit, obviously message sending though. And he will not be impressed with that penalty. And he will go to the box for two minutes. The Oilers power play unit, including Dylan Holloway and Jake Vertan, and get out there. And Tyson Berry, quarterback in this, as per usual. Now Warren Fogel and Ryan McLeod on the ice as well to start this power play. Dylan Holloway near side boards with 13 seconds gone. Gets it back to the blue line, but it's all the way out and into the neutral where it's worked back to Tyson Berry. All the way behind the Oilers' goal line on the boards, and Barry will carry it ahead. He's wearing an A in this one. Back into action there in the neutral ice. Turned ahead, chipped there, and it's Dylan Holloway playing it on the near side boards. It goes all the way around to the far side where Warren Fogel at the top high point picks it up. He'll get it back to Tyson Barry, chipped across to Warren or sorry, to Dylan Holloway from Tyson Berry. Shot incoming by Vertan and misses wide. Back, Berry one-timer blast, and that will be puck up over glass and O to play with a minute 09 to go on this power play. Whew, that was a lot of action. Anyway. Condors are doing good. Anyway. Yes, folks, the live stream link will only work if you are in Canada this evening, unfortunately. I apologize for that. It's not my doing, but it is the Edmonton Oilers doing this evening. They are 
region locking their broadcast to just Canada for some reason. And I've heard maybe even not available in British Columbia. Who knows? I'm trying to make do as well. Also calling play-by-play -play as Calvin Picard has this puck in his own end. He plays it ahead on the power play with 47 seconds to go. Derek Ryan now out there for the Oilers. It'll be played back to Picard, who's looking to just try and see the Oilers leave the zone clean. But, of course, with Michael Backlund out there penalty killing, you know what you're going to get. Jason Emers chips that one in. I, I don't know, honestly. Thoughts after three games of Jason Emers is I think um, he's done after tonight. I think... Unless he really shows something tonight, he may be released unless the Oilers can work out some kind of trade or something. I think, though, it may be very much so by the end of the week, an end for Jason Demers at Edmonton Oilers camp. We'll see. I mean, he's still an NHL vet, and there could be many other decisions in the factor, but I think he hasn't really shown much, and tonight he's had some costly turnovers that could have led to something, so just keeping that in mind. But the Oilers back on the attack. Fogel's unit is back out there, so it's the top power play line for this game. Barry works it, looking for an opportunity. It's going to be knocked. Ryan McLeod sees it, poke checked off his stick, cleared out of the zone. Five seconds to go in the power play. It's back to Picard, so you can call that power play good and done. And the Oilers are up and out of the zone. They'll work it ahead to Brad Malone, who chips it in. 15.30 to go in this period. And I'm wondering why my screen's jittering. Well, Hold on, the jitters are because I'm looking at the YouTube back end stuff, and for some reason that always jitters my screen. So 15, 18 to go here in this second period. Calvin McCard freezes the puck, and we've got a hold. So, how are Benson and Vertanen looking? I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking it's looking not too bad for those two guys. Obviously, here's the thing. Nobody has really stuck out in an offensive impact. That's what I'm saying. Nobody's really stuck out offensively. So it's tough to really notice, guys, when the game's going ho-hum, back and forth, zone to zone, little forecheck, little back check, out of the zone, neutral, neutral, and nowhere to be had. However, that is a penalty against Phil Kemp. And we're going to have ourselves an Oilers penalty kill for a hooking call against Phil Kemp, 1507 to go in this second period. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, there's no YouTube live stream for this game tonight, and that really sucks, and best of luck to you if you're out of country is the other thing. If you're out of Canada, you probably aren't going to be able to watch, but at the same rate, the link to the game is live at the top of the chat, so the link to the game is at the top of the chat if you... Don't mind going there. It says link to game and you can watch there if you are within Canada. That's the best I can do you tonight. Hopefully it's enough. If it's not, my apologies. But let's at least try to figure it out as we go along. The Flames power play starts the same way the period did with a whistle right off the hop. Only four seconds into the power play. So that kind of sucks. But friends, at the same rate too, we are 19 subscribers. 19 Oilers fans away from... 8,900 subscribers here on the channel. It's 0-0 between the Flames and Oilers. 14-9 the shots for the Flames here early in this game. Still, we're not even halfway done yet. 14:45 to go. The Oilers killing the penalty. Buck 35 on the clock to kill off yet. But yeah, if uh, you folks are enjoying the stream so far, you've stuck around for 5-10 minutes and you're saying, ah, yeah, this guy might have some interesting thoughts on the Oilers and I want to check that out later, consider subscribing. Like I said, we're 19 subscribers away from 8,900, which means we've had a pretty phenomenal day of subscriber growth, by the way. This Flames power play, there's a reason I'm talking over it. There is not much happening here, just like the rest of the game. This one is just stick, stick, puck, 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 move, puck, move, puck, move, stick, stick. How about this, though? The Oilers back the other way. Brad Malone in on the attack. He shovels it to the front, but it goes off a player back behind the net. The Flames back in possession. Both Oilers attackers, Yanmark and Malone, caught out of position. Now a four-on-four four back into the zone as the Oilers saw a defenseman stay high. And Jacob Markstrom's able to easily retrieve the dump in, leave it there for Hannafin, who headmans into the neutral and now carried ahead by Uyghur, who's just looking to carry this one down to Hannafin. I don't know, Uyghur's playing the wing? Is that what I'm seeing here? Uyghur's playing the wing on this power play with 27 seconds to go. Interesting trigger position for him, I guess you could say. And we'll see 
what ends up going here is this one will go back to the blue line all the way out actually sorry eyes are <laughs> eyes are messing up there's a good reason i'm only doing two periods of hockey here there's a good reason i'm gonna have to sit back relax watch the third period have steak dinner for supper and then actually enjoy the post game review as well shot fired on picard scramble in front of the net picard doesn't find the puck and it is now officially one nothing for the Calgary Flames. That one got lost in the crease, and it gets batted home on the power play. Calvin Picard loses the puck, and he is beat for the first time in this preseason action. He was perfect in Winnipeg after relieving Stuart Skinner. And that is it. That is all for the shutout for the Oilers in this one. It was a scramble in front, knocked down, and Sutter... Just kind of chips it up and over. Johnny on the spot. Get the goal in the crease, right? Doesn't have to be pretty. Just like you tell the U11, U9 hockey players, go to the net and start whacking sticks. Don't be violent. Just get it on net. And it results in a goal for Sutter. one nothing for the Calgary Flames. Phil Kemp off the ensuing faceoff back in his own end. We'll see this puck go up and around the boards. He will get it out all the way into, well, the Flames' end where they will go chasing after it. Petrov's line now out there. Petrov sees Esposito flanking him with Greg McKaig as well helping out for checking heavy and hard. Greg McKaig, I think he's also had a pretty solid little forechecking game to him tonight, creating traffic. And this line is definitely working the Flames around in their own zone. Sam Rukov pinches, doesn't keep the puck in, and now back the other way the puck goes. It's backhanded in on net, then it's backhanded off of Calvin Picard, who sticks in there after giving up the goal. 12-20 to go in this second period. one nothing for the Calgary Flames. And if you don't see, now all of a sudden there's something to it, right? There's a goal on the board. The excitement's there, and let's get this going. Shot fired on Picard, and this is uh, this game's looking pretty dang lazy all of a sudden. The Oilers are barely moving around their defensive zone. Batted out, obviously tired legs on the ice after a heavy forechecking period because of the Sam Rukov pinch, but it's okay. 11.55 to go in this second period, and the Oilers get fresh legs. Marcus Namalainen is on the ice. Again, I keep thinking about it. That's why I'm screwing his name up. I'm thinking about it. And the more I think about something, the easier I am to screw it up. Back the other way, though, comes in on the attack. I believe that's, uh, who is that? Uh, Jake Vertanen out there alongside Brad Malone and Tyler Benson. Malone and Benson working this puck down to Vertanen, but it's cut off before it gets there, and the Flames recover in their own end, and it'll be up and out and cleared back in by Nima Linen, who fires it off of the boards onto a Flames stick, and it comes up near side boards, up and out of the Flames end, into the neutral, back onto an Oilers stick in the neutral zone on the defensive side, and they will get it back into that territory where it's just going to bobble around on the Flames bench now, right pressed up against the boards. They're looking for this. They're looking for this. They're trying to figure this one out. And this one, Brad Malone, is going to get it down the ice, and that's going to do it for their shift. So not really a noticeable shift, but again, a bend, don't break. Don't let them cross your own blue line. Good shift there from Brad Malone's line. And it's back into the Oilers' end. Here is Ryan Murray picks it up. It's Tyson Berry looking to retrieve the puck along the board, board battle. It's not going to work out. Derek Ryan's going to see it go back to the blue line. Rasmus Anderson off to Blake Coleman, who will f fake a clap, clap it off the skate of Devin Shore, who's going to go all the way down. And, well, this is now oof, good crunch there. That was a good forecheck. And now turned back there by the Oilers at their own blue line. And this one, again, nothing much happening here. Jacob Marks remote to play it. 10-10 to go. And that is pretty much it. That is pretty much all for the first half of this first uh Half of the oh, well, first half of the second period, first half of the game, I guess you could say. Sorry, I'm falling asleep already. Uh, yep, but now the Oilers getting run around their zone a little bit here. The Flames shooting the puck from all angles, and um, yeah. So, folks, if you're looking for the game, I just see a bunch of people come in all of a sudden looking for the game at the top of my chat where you guys are chatting, asking how to watch the game. There's a chat for me highlighted in blue and yellow that says link to game. Click the link and you should be able to watch live on the Edmonton Oilers website alongside with me and you'll be good to go. I promise you that. I'm hoping. I'm telling you. Just go to there and it should all work out for you. Anyway, let's keep this going, shall we? We've got ourselves a little young man missing a couple of teeth up front. 
Looking like a regular old hockey player right there. Looking like uh, Jason Mers, actually. The toothless wonder for the Oilers blue line. So here we go, folks. The Flames, the Oilers. Battle in here. And it is worked out after a face-off in the Oilers' end. Fogel will pick up this puck. It'll be turned over on the Flames immediately, though. That's this game. That's so this game. It is one of those just preseason. Why are we even watching this kind of hockey games tonight? But that's fine and dandy as Warren Fogel's got a partial break. But don't you worry. Mackenzie Weaker pokes it off his stick before we can get anything going and near Manitoba, hopefully it does. I don't know if you're in Saskatchewan, potentially it should, as long as there's no regionality on the internet stuff out there in eastern Saskatchewan. But uh, everything in Alberta and Northwest Territories in Saskatchewan, I guarantee you, will work for you to be able to watch the game tonight. However, friends, 8.54 to go in this second period, and there's legit nothing to report other than the Sutter goal, one nothing here in the mid part. So... The Oilers, and is that going to be a tripping call? Is Matt Fay Petrov moving his feet for a second time, going to call a second power play for the Oilers? You like to see that. Good work, Petrov. You know what? If you're going to be noticeable in minimal ice time, go out there, move your feet, and see if good things don't happen. And that's exactly what has happened for Matt Fay Petrov tonight. He has drawn two penalties tonight, both ones just moving his feet, getting into zones, and creating opportunity out of nothing and he just back skated a little bit Hannafin crossed himself up and took the trip and that was it that was all for that and away we go with a penalty call so that's good we like to see that and my goodness we have a lot of views on random stuff tonight absolutely and somebody's out there viewing the Yak City Gaming is dull on the TV aye, 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 that's old school stuff anyway folks if you're new to the channel if you're new to the channel and you want to stick around and listen to what I have for thoughts on the Oilers this season I'd love to uh, discuss the Oilers with you and hang out with you all season long, so consider subscribing uh, if, if there's one thing I could ask you to do. All right, anyway, going to run you an ad just since we're on commercial break quickly and see what we can do here. All right, what do we got? 884, so we were within 16 subscribers. Of that new mark, that new 8,900 mark, that is incredible. That's been like two days. All right, get off commercial. Let's keep this hockey game going. I'd like to finish this off. That's all I'd like to do. The red mile. The red mile. This guy? Or the old Connor McDavid 1617 jersey? Or this guy? It, this guy's having a good time. This guy's this guy is having a good time. Oh, that guy's having an all right time. I guess the new Connor McDavid. Oh, that's a Reebok. That's a Reebok. That's one of them things. That wasn't a legit jersey. Ooh, I almost got fooled. Anyway, friends, we're just literally on commercial break. We're on commercial break right now, waiting for the Oilers to get back to playing hockey against the Calgary Flames here. All right, we're almost there. We're almost there. All right. Now we're back. We're rocking. We're rolling. Back into Calvin Picard in the Oilers' end. It'll be moved up off the boards. And Ryan McLeod, a little bit of speed, a little bit of skate. And he's going to use Warren Fogel. What a move. Shot fired off the post. Wide of the net. Oh, my goodness. That was one heck of a move there. Great little ticky-tack play there at the blue line. Zone entry from Warren Fogel and Ryan McLeod. That was a beautiful power play opportunity. The Flames We'll just gear this one back into the Oilers' end. Buck 17 to go on this power play. I guess they were showing a little bit too much Jumbotron stuff and not enough power play stuff. As here we go across, and it's met there by Jason Demers, who will fire this one across, and he will get it back to the blue line. Flames, though, meet it there and bat it back, and that will be worked onto the stick of... Ah, it is not Calvin Picard. Uh, shocker, it is Stuart Skinner now in net for the Edmonton Oilers, looking to keep his shutout streak alive in the preseason. Wouldn't that be some kind of overachieving mark to be set? Here we go. Here's an opportunity for the Oilers. Wide side, front of the net, slapped... Nope, slapped out of danger. 
by the Calgary Flames and back down to Mr. Stuart Skinner who will sit back there and allow that one to go back to Ryan Murray who's getting a look on this power play 30 seconds to go in this second period shot fired in there hard rim by Tyson Berry it'll be played back to the blue line and not very hard skating going off for a line changer the Oilers so Marcus Nimeline and will pick up that puck from Skinner one of his Old battery mates on the back end of the Oilers uh, farm team defense, the Bakersfield Condors. Tyson Berry looks to play this puck off the boards. Devin Shore will move it back to Berry, who steps into a one-timer. And whoo that was a blast from the point, but it's held up by, of course, Jacob Markstrom, who's having a pretty decent little game so far. So you can't blame him there. He's doing all right, having a good time. And now... For the Oilers, they just got to keep this game rocking and rolling here, keep the offensive pressure going, and we should be fine and dandy. And friends, just to say, we have entered that territory on Dolany TV where we are within about 1,500 views of having an all-time top 10 live stream here. So let's uh, let's keep this thing going, shall you say? Maybe, maybe we just stream the whole game. I don't know, screw around and find out, I guess you could say, but... They're previewing the monocle, which has ice cream and stuff there. They got the beer on tap. They're having a good time. All right. Anyway, uh, anyone got wings? I actually haven't heard anyone talk about wings in the comments section. I mentioned it at the end of the Nima Linen video yesterday. Was uh, Quickly, if you haven't already checked that video out, I'd ask you kindly to do that for me. But at the same rate, too, is um, I was talking about, I was going for wings last night just to get it out of the way so as I could enjoy my wings for the week. But if you haven't already um, had your wings, what are you doing? Get on the uh, Skip the Dishes. Call up your favorite buddy. Do something. Get some wings to your house and get it going. Or are you sitting at the bar listening to this guy while you're eating your wings? I mean, I do some weird things like eat alone at the bar by myself. But I couldn't imagine listening to me at the bar. Dreaming up scenarios. Tyson, there's only 100 people watching. That's not a big crowd. Calm down. Anyway, we're still also on commercial break. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep my energy up here as the shots are 17 to 11 for the oil, uh, Flames, sorry. And one nothing the score for the Flames. It's ho-hum. This game is this game is a preseason game where one team's icing an NHL lineup and the other team's icing an AHL lineup. And that AHL lineup is doing whatever it takes just to stay afloat. That is legitimately the story of this game. And it is painful. But that's fine. The Oilers now have their top line and Ryan McLeod and the big boys, Warren Fogle and all of them out there. So hopefully this works out. The face-off win, though, gets past Jason Demers, who, as the games go on, I'm getting less impressed by. I, uh, I don't see him as any big part of the solution unless we have a camp injury we don't know about, which Vinny DeHarnay being injured kind of requires him being around still. But I... Not very impressive from him tonight, and I don't think he was really that impressive against Winnipeg. I mean, it was part of a shutout performance, so that said there, maybe not. But anyway, Jason Amur is now getting this puck out right on cue and across the neutral zone. McLeod goes to Fogle. It's chipped in, and Holloway's not sure where that puck is. And now this will... Um, this will go back into the Oilers' end. Shot fired and saved by Skinner, I believe... If I'm not mistaken, that is his first save of the period with 5.46 to go here in the second period, my friends. Whew, okay, let's keep this rocking here. That was a good zone entry from the Flames. Good little dish. Way to find the gap on Niemelainen and get it on for a shot. But Stuart Skinner, much more of a quality goaltender than he was that time he came up way back when in 2021. So you got to keep that in mind. Skinner has evolved and grown up quite a bit. And he's looking to be an NHL serviceable backup for this season to Jack Campbell, who should be able to be a little bit, hopefully, more steady Eddie than Mike Smith for an entire season. Tyler Benson onside here. And this one's going to be run back into the flame zone. It's turned back, and Sam Rukov steps up into a shot. And this has kind of been... Um, this has kind of been the problem for the Oilers in this game is when they get a good look on Markstrom, it's right into the, not even midsection, it's literally shot right into the glove 
So that's cost the Oilers some rebounds. That's cost the Oilers some ability to create traffic and bang in a rebound in front. So hopefully they start throwing them at the pads a little bit more and trying to create chaos. That wouldn't be bad, but just tough to watch when the Oilers don't seem to kind of mesh all together and get it going, just D to forward attack. However, um, I'm seeing a couple of comments just about the Flames and Oilers kind of lineups tonight. The reason the Flames are icing a full team tonight simply is they're at home, right? This is preseason games. Season ticket holders get cheap, cheap seats. I'm talking from what I've heard this year, they're paying like 20 bucks a game to go watch the Flames. So this is kind of one of those organizational do good, shout out BioSteel, things for the Flames where they ice the home lineup. The big boys let you see them for cheap and right. You can bring the kids, you can bring whoever you don't usually bring to the game and kind of enjoy it a little bit. So that's kind of what I'm seeing here over the flames tonight is it, it's by design. It's not a, it's not a, Oh, this is who the Oilers are playing. So let's embarrass them. No, it's, it's simply just a matter of how you sell tickets in the season. All right. Here we go. Let's see what we can figure out here as this stream goes along and we're waiting for Harvey the Hound to get off my bloody screen. Get this dog out of here. Um, anyway, is there anything about Oilers Twitter we need to know? Well, did Aaron Judge hit home run 52? And yeah, so again, for folks watching, right, I, I've been pretty critical of Jason Demers, but I haven't said much on Jake for Tannen. So far, again, another... Really non-impactful game from him too. It's kind of one of those things from both of these guys. They they came to camp with a lot to kind of be valuable with. And I think at this point, Jason Demers, just because of the injury to DeHarnay, still has more value to the Oilers than Vertanen. And I mean, for the Oilers, I guess you could have probably set up Vertanen a little bit better than rather run him with hot as heck Dylan Holloway in game one against Winnipeg. But... Again, you got to find a way to overcome that as an NHL veteran in Vertanen, and he didn't. So, so far, things not looking good. But, again, I'm going to not read too much into what Mark Spector is saying based on, obviously, what's come out about Yes Puliarvi over the past couple days. However, the Oilers firing this puck through the neutral zone. Devin Shore sees it go through his skates. He says, good enough for me. I'm going to go off and take a line change. And the Flames regroup behind their own net, and they'll carry this one out of their zone. Fire it right through. That was a, wow. That was a thread the needle pass if I've ever seen one. That was unreal. Shot blocked there by Ryan Murray, who's going to spring Dylan Holloway. Four on one Connor McDavid numbers. Dylan Holloway against the Flames. And he was not able to get through. So it's turned back, fired back into the near side half wall. And look at this. Who's in flight? Dylan Holloway's in flight. And he's going to go chasing this one down. Nima Linen gets in there on the forecheck heavy presence. You love that. That is the one thing Nima Linen brings to the Oilers that they don't have. But now they're two men wide. Shot fired. Rebound goes off the pads of Skinner right onto a flame stick high at the point. Thankfully, that one avoided danger. Doesn't look like a penalty's coming up to the Oilers. Looked like uh, might have been possibly one there, just depending on how Jason Emers reacted. Not He had two penalties, I believe, against Winnipeg as well. Or was that last uh, game out against Seattle? Could not tell you at this point. It all blends together based on how much I've watched this Oilers and talked about it. It's kind of hard to track the stuff at the same time you're talking about it. That's the one weird thing I... Oh, Wow. What a bad hop for the Oilers. And not in position is Stuart Skinner. And Michael Stone, the PTO god, slaps one home to beat him. He'll be on contract with the Flames again. It's just a matter of making the money work. But he comes in there and absolutely smackadoos one home. Slap shot from the point. This man, honestly, Michael Stone, if you want to see one guy win a Stanley Cup as a Flames fan, it is Michael Stone. That man has been through thick and thin with that organization over the past several years. And he, again, scores a big goal here to put the Flames up 2 nothing. And Stuart Skinner did not have a clue where that puck was. He just stood up, and it was in the net before he butterflied down. 19th shot of the game, second goal of the game for the Calgary Flames. 3-12 to go here in this second period. 
And that'll be it. That'll be all pretty much probably for the offense in this second period, to be honest with you, because we haven't really seen much, if at all, for offense all game long through 37 minutes. So I don't expect too much fireworks within a four minute span. However, you just never know when the Oilers battling at the Oilers bench, trying to keep a puck alive. The flames turn and burn back the other way. And shot's going to go across off a skate of Sam Rukov back into the corner. High point kept in by Uyghur and offside the ruling. Actually, I thought it was kept in. It was not. So it's offside at the blue line. And away we go. Anyway, here we go, folks. Thank you. Thank you to everybody that stuck with me. You know, I mean, it's quite an easy option to quit out and not not have anything to do with the game after not being able to watch. I appreciate anybody and all you that have stuck around with me. I mean, we've held pretty much over 100 all night, and that's pretty impressive for a preseason live stream game that's actually physically available. That's the crazy part to me. So Tyson Berry working this puck in his defensive zone, 229 to go here in this second period. And, man, it's just a whole hum game. Nothing to write home about on an Oilers perspective. From a Flames perspective, too, I mean, your goal scorers are Stone and Sutter. Feels good, I guess you could say, but other than that, I don't think there's much else to really report on the Flames end either. All right. Take a breath. We're going to break. Cool. Take a sec. Take a sec. Relax. And let's just see what we've got going on here. We've rocked 1,424 views this um, this hour. That's not too bad at all. That's a pretty decent little go get them hour. Anyway, 2.04 to go here in this second period for the Flames and Oilers. Worked across, shot off of the body of Skinner. So it's a save there, 20th shot of the game for the Flames. And now Rasmus Anderson has to hop off his stick off the glass. He recoups, gets it down along the boards. And it goes all the way back to the point. Shot fired off of Skinner, back into the far side boards. Oh my goodness, I'm wondering why my leg stream, my stream's leg. And it's because I'm back on the analytics side of YouTube. But here we go, back the other way. And Luke Esposito, who's had two ho-hum games for the Oilers, is on the ice. But it looks like... For the third time this game, the Edmonton Oilers' fourth line has drawn a penalty. Things that don't make sense in a preseason game is Matvey Petrov and Luke Esposito are the two men that have drawn penalties in favor of the Oilers, power plays, I should say, tonight. Matvey Petrov has literally been unnoticeable other than the two times he's got hauled down to get a power play because he's on the fourth line. And I mean, it's Matvey Petrov, who's still a year or two away from being anything noticeable in preseason. But he's drawn two penalties and been very effective at getting us zone time because of it. There's a shot from Murray. Finally gets the rebound, but it bites off and away. The Oilers keep possession in the offense zone. Dylan Holloway, who's had a very unusually quiet game. I mean, Holloway's had four games here so far this preseason where he's been a dynamo, like just electric factory the entire time. And tonight, very quiet. I mean, against an NHL squad, yes, he had the one very good play, but what we've become accustomed to with Dylan Holloway in this preseason is all game long, every time he's on the ice, the puck's on his stick, he's doing something with it. There's a turnover, unfortunately. Flames flip it down the ice, and he just hasn't gotten it going, unfortunately. So here we go. Ryan McLeod going to go back the other way, try and move this puck up. And the others are just going to run down the line here with their big guns on the ice on this power play. Try and roll things out for the final 33 seconds of this, the second period. And friends, it looks like we're going to wind time down. The Oilers not too uh, urgent here. There's Jason Demers on the ice with 19 seconds to go. But it doesn't look like the Flames and Oilers are too urgently looking to press this power play any further with time expiring. 30 seconds will be left on the board of the power play by the time this period expires within 3, 2, 1. <sighs> Oh, this is getting painful, friends. I mean, yes, the Oilers are down 2 nothing, and that sucks, but it's just, it's just getting painful. 
The Oilers, shots on goal, 12 to the Flames, 21. The face-offs, 57% in favor of the Oilers. Both teams over on the special teams. And it is Brett Sutter from Michael Stone. And Michael Stone from Brett Sutter and Solovoyov. There you go. Solovyov? 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 I could not tell you. Anyway, I'm going to go grab water. I'm going to go grab a granola bar. I'm going to go grab a break quickly, and we'll be back for the intermission, and then we'll see what happens with the views. If it pops up like 200 like it did last time, uh, potentially we'll go rock and roll in the third period. Stick with me, friends. All right, here we go. Let's keep this rocking and rolling, friends. All right, here we go. Oh, take a breath. Take a breath. Take a bow. It's been a good night. It's been a great night. Anyway, is there anything else I want to link to you guys right now? Um, let me one more time promote that Brett Ritchie video if I can. I'd be appreciative of you guys check or not Brett Ritchie. I just saw Brett Ritchie in one of my video titles. Sorry. Let me once again promote to you this Marcus Nimalinen. Ah, I thought about it again. Nimalinen video here on Doll Any TV for you to go check out during the intermission. I'd appreciate if you do that. And folks as well, if you haven't already and you want to consider hanging around to talk more Oilers with me, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'd be glad to have you along for the journey. We're rocking and rolling to 8,900 subscribers now, just 17 away. So we are that close. Um, five straight scoreless periods for Edmonton on the road this preseason. Scarily a great A in this one, or scarcely, sorry, as Marksford might need to ride the bike between periods while... Uh, Mark Spector, you do realize the Oilers have literally iced nobody's, in terms of NHL caliber, high-end scoring talent, a bunch of nobodies, I guess. I, I'd love to read the replies here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the replies. 
I'm interested to see what they say. Um, yeah, nope, um, nothing there, nothing there. So, is there anything? Um, playoff baseball, what a day. Um, down by two after two, yep, that's true. And... All right, is there anything else we've missed on Twitter? Quick check of the old Twitter machine. Um, goalies continue to split games as we see Skinner take over from Picard. And that literally uh, was 11 minutes ago. The others just tweeted that out. It's a waste. A uh, veteran with 100 plus games and nearly a decade around the NHL. Good tonight, stopping 16 to 17 games against a Flames team that Edmonton has. That has Edmonton Oak Gun. Yeah, obviously. Okay. Reading comprehension has not been stellar tonight, folks. I am struggling. Sorry. Apologies there. And also, thank you to everybody who's tuned in tonight. If you're still hanging around from the start of the stream, really appreciate that. Because, friends, we just topped 7,500 views on the live stream as we're just kind of gaining some folks back here. Welcome back to the stream or welcome for the first time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. This is officially a top 10 live stream all time on Dolany TV. Let's go. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I really appreciated that. So, quickly, um, do I want to put up a poll? No, I don't because I don't want to take out my pinned tweet. Again, if you're just joining us, the link to tonight's game is at the top of the chat. You can go check that out quickly if you want to. And uh, secondary, if it doesn't work, hang around, stick around with me, and we'll hopefully make it work for you. Uh, just keeping you informed with everything here. I don't know. I'm still undecided on if I'm going to carry through to the end of this uh, to the end of this intermission, but we'll find out. I'm just kind of playing it by ear and just seeing how I feel. Don't know if I want to go try and eat that steak supper. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to get hungry by the end of the second intermission or not, so we'll see what happens. But I'd like to at least carry a lot of you through and hopefully get you the game link as needed, as that would be great service if I could bring that to you at least before this game ends. I will say, however, if you've subscribed or if you're thinking about subscribing or you're just thinking about coming back after this stream ends, we should have a game review up. If this game ends at 9.30, 30, which is what I would estimated it'll end about 9.30, 9.45. We should have a game review up around 10, 10.05 tonight. So come on back to Dolany TV post game. We'll talk all about everything we've talked about here on the live stream, which is a whole bunch of nothing. That's okay. We'll figure it out and we'll uh, make something out of nothing there. It'll probably only be a four or five minute but it'll be okay. We'll get her done. So is there anything else? Is there anything else we can get going here? I don't think there is. The Oilers' Twitter sphere is pretty quiet tonight. That's good. And sounds like the Oilers are losing, but they have one more period. Yes, the Oilers are down 2 nothing after the second period of play to the Calgary Flames. The shots on goal, 21 for the Flames. The shots on goal for the Oilers, 12. 57-43 face-off splits in favor of the Oilers. The Oilers have 12 block shots, and they are not getting too badly out hit by a veteran Calgary Flames lineup. That's your quick scoreboard because the Flames only like showing that graphic for five seconds. Literally five seconds is all I get to read six pieces of information. It's brutal. Both special teams useless tonight on capitalizing power plays, but great, great at killing penalties because that's basically all these two teams have done tonight is do nothing but defend and kill things off. So that's my thoughts anyway, just quickly for you. If you're asking. Um, quickly, what do we got here? I'm going to add up just kind of what's happened on the live stream this afternoon, this evening so far. And we are up over 700 and or 7,800 views since the live stream began here on Dolany TV, dating back to 6.30 p.m. today. So that's pretty interesting too. And here we go. We're talking about Blake Coleman and his life in Texas. They've given him a lot of screen time because they really heavily featured him today, or this uh, off-season, I guess, for off-season content. Whew. Oh, man. All 
All right, is there anything else that we can quickly cover off here? Let's go to the Otis Town scoreboard. How about that? We haven't covered off the Otis Town scoreboard tonight. Let's go quickly discuss that. It's 2-0 for the Flames after 2. After 1, it's the Ducks over the Coyotes, 1-0. The Golden Knights up 2-0 on the Avalanche at the end of 1. At the end of 1 in San Jose as well, it's 1-0 for the Sharks over the Kings. And for the Capitals, a 3-1 final against the Flyers. The Flyers were at home and the Capitals came in and took 3-1. The Blue Jackets beat the Sabres 4-1. And then the Maple Leafs shut out the Montreal Canadiens 3-0. The Red Wings downed by the Blackhawks 4-2. And then the Hurricane and Lightning game postponed due to that hurricane hitting Florida. They are now, Florida, uh, Tampa's in Nashville doing their training camp there. So I guess that's what you could really report on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Folks, we should be getting back to hockey shortly. If you haven't already checked out the link to the game to see if it's going to work for you, it's at the top of the chat titled Link to the Game from Dolany TV, so make sure to go check that out quickly and get that done. Other than that, I don't know what else to tell you, because there isn't much else to tell you, because we're just waiting for things to get going here in this uh, third period. Flames and Oilers. I really don't know if I have the time or strength to carry it through, but we'll try and carry it through either way. I'd like to try and push towards that 8,600 mark and outdo that last live stream, the Kraken Oilers game on Monday night. That finished up at 8,600 views, and my goodness, would it ever be nice to be out earning that one, pacing it, I guess you could say, because that was one heck of a live stream then. I'd love to crush it now and see what we could get done that is for sure we're just on the intermission report quickly so i'm going to quickly just take a second to look at some analytics here and see what we're saying about this stream that marcus name line in video my best video out of the last 10 i've posted thank you in large part to all you folks tuning in tonight 1500 views on that and that feels dang good trust me it feels dang good to be looking at video numbers like that again here on the channel and secondary to that, I guess I could give you an update on how the watch time's looking tonight. 7,683 views times 2.1 is 16,000 minutes, which is legitimately 269 hours streamed on this stream in two and a half hours. So far, we've been live. My friends, hey, hey, if that ain't motive enough to go carry through and get this live stream done tonight, I don't know what is. Wow, that is some stellar numbers for sure. Trust me, on YouTube, if you have a 100 view or hundred hour day, you're doing good. I don't know how much you folks know about the back end workings of YouTube, but in my books, if you have a 100 hour day on YouTube, that's literally 24 or 6,000 minutes watched, that's a pretty dang good day. And tonight, so far, things looking good here on Dolany TV as we progress along for this Oilers and Flames game. Folks, I'm going to drop one last link in there quickly for you. I just want you to have a little bit of fun with me. Would you do that? Um, go back to this one right here where I called Leon Dreisaitl's hat trick goal versus the Calgary Flames on March 26, 2022. It was a mess, but my call of Leon's hattie back in March. I want you to enjoy that. There you go. Enjoy that. Um, let's see what we go. Mr. T, you raise a good question. That's the first. Uh, hold on. I got to show you guys this. If you guys have not seen this yet, you might have. You might not have. So, this past week, last week, I bought a camera. Yes, I did. I spent some money last week and went out of my way, earned some money via some odd jobs in broadcasting I had this summer, and bought this nice, right here, Canon XA15 that you see in front of you. Nice little, very versatile, works great. I will tell you what this camera is great for, shoot cam. You ever been to a bull riding and you see the video live feed from right in behind the chutes, the bull riders tugging on the rope, getting their hands gripped up, wrapping their hand around the 
grip. I don't even know what the official term of that is. I've only worked four bull ridings, but this is a great shoe cam. And what I am after next, I will tell you, there is something I am after next, and I have to figure out how to make it work. But what I am after next off of these uh, video cameras and equipment is not necessarily mics. I actually don't care too much about the mics. I think this headset works very well for the purpose I use it for. However, I think what I am after next to answer your question, Mr. T, is simply put, simply put, I am going for, uh, what are they called? Uh, they're not clear comms. Clear comm systems are very nice, and I'd love to have a clear comm. Um, however, I think what I'm after is some kind of, I'll get the name for it right here. Right here, let me, let me call, let me call my guy. I know what I'm after, I just need to ask him. I, I use it with him. Let's see what we can do here. Is he going to answer the phone? This is the question. We're literally on the loading screen. Where we, Budsy? You're live on Dolly TV. I need to ask you a question. The wireless receivers we use. What's what's the brand name of those? Okay, but what what uh, what's what's the name that I know? The four hundreds, the six hundreds. Hollylands, there we go. Yes, Holly Hollylands wireless receivers. Thank you very much, Budsy. The game's back on. I'll catch you in a minute. Okay. All right, here we go. It is what it is. All right, so folks, there it is. Um, quickly put, it is a Hollyland wireless transmitter and wireless receiver. That's what I'm looking for. That is what I'm looking for. Okay, good to go. So, that's where we're at. And yes, obviously, I, I, I do I do hear you guys on the headset is not necessarily the best thing in the world. But as far as I can figure out for my current setup, it, it's the best option I have. I would love to get into more mics, but until I can properly hang a mic, I can't, uh, I can't justify properly spending money on a good mic. Like I, I went to broadcasting school at Nate. You want to talk about fancy dancy mics? They got some there and I'd love to get things going, but until I can actually justify what's going to work for both broadcast on scene and broadcast in the home location, I can't really figure things out, but trust me, everything is a work in progress. I want the wireless transmitters just so as I can more or less be a little bit more versatile, right? Currently, I have to have my camera, the, even the fancy one I showed you, within five feet of the setup, of the computer setup. So that's that's a little bit restricting. So I'd like to try and set up a wireless system where I can be out doing play-by-play -play in one corner, camera person's operating somewhere else, and we rock and roll and it's a whole thing. So here we go. Friends, if you're looking for the game as we get set for the opening face-off of the third period, the link to the game is at the top of the chat, highlighted in blue and yellow. Get it going there. It says link to game. Go click and hopefully you're inside Canada and you should be good to go. All right, here we go. Ryan McLeod versus Trevor Lewis in the face-off dot. It's going to be worked off the face-off. Won by the Flames. Mackenzie Weger slaps it, clearing it out of the zone because the Oilers are on the power play with 20 seconds to go. Tyson Berry chips it across and he's going to get this going up and down. And away we go. The link is at the top, my friend. The link is at the top. Anyway, the Oilers across the blue line. Ryan Murray gets it onto a tape. Can't get it going there. And it's going to be won back by the Flames. The power play's over for the Oilers, and it's cleared all the way back to Stuart Skinner, who goes and gets it back there. 19.24 to go in this third period. Look at that. We're already, we're already a minute in. We're almost done here. All right, anyway. One back into... The flames end, and that will be wound back too far for an icing. <laughs> All right, we're going to have ourselves, please, please do not kill me with that third period, similar to being that second period. That second period was <sighs> rough. That second period is probably my least favorite part about hockey is just when it's drown you in just terrible hockey. And that's what it was from the Oilers. The Flames obviously scored two goals, but nothing was too pretty or exciting about that 
third period anyway. The Oilers back around 18.58 to go here in this third period. 21-12, the shots in favor of the Flames. And I think, friends, I'm going to take the advice of the comments section, take the advice of my friends at work, and we are going to just stream this thing the whole way through. Why not? It's the Battle of Alberta. Don't get to stay up late every night. Got to be responsible six nights a week, so why not? Random Wednesday night on the last Wednesday of September. Get it going. The Flames, a glorious chance. And McLean, after taking the penalty earlier in the game, misses a wide open net. Short side on Stuart Skinner. And that was tight. Look at that. He goes there and flips it up and over the net. And Oda play. And he is upset with himself on that one because he had a heck of a play chance there. And he just scooped up on it. And it goes out of play for a face off to the right of Skinner. A buck 30 gone in this third period. 18.30 on the clock with the shots 22 to 12. 2 nothing for the Calgary Flames. Oh boy, here we go. I know I'm getting tired when I start setting into this sing-songy kind of the more style of how Bob Cole used to do his play-by-play. -play. I know somebody pointed that out the other day on one of my videos and I really appreciated that as that is someone that I very much so idolized growing up. Why wouldn't you as a Canadian hockey fan, right? However, 18-14 to go here in this period as it's punched in behind the Oilers' net. Taken down is the Flames player and it's going to be a penalty to Dmitry Samarukov of the Edmonton Oilers. I believe that's number 58 being hauled off the ice for his time in the box for that trip against the Calgary Flames defender. Samarukov will take two for tripping. The Flames reset the shot board and it will be a direct energy Calgary Flames power play to begin this third period. Interesting. All right. Not, not the way you want to start it, but okay. And Samarukov just gets the stick in there, can opens him, takes him down, and away he goes. So the Flames back in behind their net after an initial clear on the faceoff by the Oilers. Carried ahead by Hannafin. It'll go across to Coleman at the blue line, back to Hannafin, but it's cut off by Derek Ryan, who chips it all the way down the ice. Cut there by Jacob Markstrom, leaves it behind for Hannafin, behind the Flames net. Carried out of the zone, and now Hannafin hands across to Michael Backlund. The shot fired. Sorry, my video's lagging again. I apologize. The shot came in. Shot now again from Coleman. That one blockered away by Skinner, and it'll be carried all the way into the Flames end on the rebound where Hannafin again gives chase behind the net. Ryan McLeod pressuring him there, and it goes all the way into the Oilers' end. And that, two full-length clears, results in an icing. The Oilers can do it with a buck oh nine on the penalty kill, the Flames with a buck 9 on the power play. They can't do it there. And that was a heck of a rip there from Blake Coleman. But it's Stuart Skinner bodying it up and blocking it into the corner. A good save, positionally sound. And that will allow the Oilers to reset on this icing call. The Flames won the face off. They're behind their own net. And they're being pressured, pushed back into their defensive zone a little longer than they'd prefer on the power play. Jonathan Huberto, D to D on the blue line of the Oilers. Carried in behind the Oilers' net. Now around Rasmus Anderson. Dumps it off for Nazem Kadri, who I really haven't noticed tonight. Shot fired. And the one-timer fired wide of the Oilers' net. Goes all the way back down to Jacob Markstrom. For about the fifth time on this power play, he'll leave it there for his defenseman. Carried out of the zone by the Flames attack. Kadri across the blue line. Huberto down to Kadri. Denied. Across spin shot to, well, Tyler Toffoli on the far side. He can't get it going. Toffoli back D to D. And now all of a sudden here's Kadri playing pitch and catch. Toffoli to the point. Rasmus Anderson across to the shot coming from Kadri after the pass that came to Huberto. Found its way to the middle for Kadri. And that was a lot of D to D and tape to tape. And moving around the Oilers zone by the Calgary Flames on that one. That is for sure. And that was about the Flames best sustained attack on the power play tonight. That was something special there. They got going with the big boys on the ice. Ten seconds to go on the power play for the Flames as they lead 2-0 here. 16-14 to go in this third period. 
the shot, rifled off a leg in front. Uh, well, that'll kill the penalty. And the Oilers back to even strength, stretching it out. Dimitri Samaruko would have out of the box. He'll get it down to Dylan Holloway in the offensive zone. Chipped it ahead, tried to play that puck, couldn't get it going. Now the Oilers on the four check as the Flames in possession in the defensive zone, trying to get this puck out. They do. It's out the outstretched skate and stick of the Flames player all the way down as Warren Fogel touches up for an icing call. Friends, we got 15.43 to go in this third period. We're just about up and done, and we've just crossed 75 likes on the stream. Thank you to everybody who's been a big part of this live stream here tonight. Really appreciate you tuning in. I hope you stay tuned for the post-game review following tonight's game here on Dolan TV. And if you haven't already, consider hitting that subscribe button and sticking around with me. I'd really love to have you here for a full season of Oilers coverage as it'll be quickly pounced on by the goaltender David Wolf for the Calgary Flames. And my buddy's all upset that he didn't get to watch David Wolf in net for the Flames the other night. This kid, a young stud in the making. This guy is going to be something special to watch for some years to come in Calgary. Trust me on that once Jacob Markstrom's gone. Anyway, face off to the right of Wolf. Dustin Wolf. Is it Dustin Wolf or David Wolf? I think it's Dustin, actually. Sorry, my pardon. 15.36 to go. The Flames have limited the Oilers to 12 shots in 45 minutes of hockey so far. The Oilers now looking to get number 13 on the board. Lucky number 13. It's going to go back, and Jake Vertanen's going to wind up. He's going to see his shot blocked. It goes off the end boards right on to the paddle of Wolf, who will freeze it up. And we, our friends, will have a stoppage in play. 15, 19 to go here in this third period. And I can tell we're definitely getting into the remaining crowd left on the stream now. As things are starting to creep up in terms of average view duration, that's solid. I like to see that, friends. Let's have ourselves a good rest of the game. I'd love to see the Oilers um, trying to get going. They're losing 2 nothing right now. I'd like to see them get in gear and maybe score a goal here. And it looks like Matvey Petrov's on the ice. He shoots the puck, but whoo, what a block right off the faceoff by the Flames. Phil Kemp to the rescue, keeps the puck alive. Petrov shoots the puck from a sharp angle. There's lucky shot number 13. Out of go, Petrov. He's had a solid little game. Two penalties drawn, a couple shots on net, and he has looked like an all right little gem in the rough for the Edmonton Oilers here coming into this year. 14 shots now on net for the Oilers as they carry through the neutral zone. Greg McHagg with speed in on the attack. He gets way, 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 way worked over by the Calgary Flames defense who come up with the puck and get it to Nazem Kadri. The puck across the blue line, back to the blue line of the Oilers. Shot fired, glove save, Stuart Skinner. You like to see that. I love to see that myself. Good save there from Skinner and away we go. We'll have a hold up on the play. And a face-off in the Oilers' zone. Stuart Skinner flashing the leather. Good, solid, positional. Love to see it. Love kind of save from Stuart Skinner. And we'll hold on and keep things going here. As it's been a stellar day here on Dolany TV. Not so stellar at the so Scotiabank Saddle Dome for the Edmonton Oilers. It's okay. It's only preseason and you're icing in the NHL lineup. But you'd like to see them get in gear and get that goal. At least one crack the goose egg on the road sometime this preseason. And this one's going to be back. Shot Janmark. Save from Wolf. All kinds of traffic. He swallowed it up, however. No doubt about it. And got the job done. And for the Oilers, we'll have another freeze in the offensive zone. So there we go. All right, here we go. Fans dancing at their rink, having a good time. Oh, are they? And something going on there. All right. Oh, the old Jumbotron's glitching a little bit. That's fine. 14 15 to go in this third period. Face off. Dot Lucic coming in to face Ryan McLeod, the top line for the Oilers of. As, oh, you don't see that. Sorry, folks. I had that up there for the longest while. I don't anymore. The top line of Holloway, McLeod, and Fogel on the board right now on the ice for the Oilers. Trying to get things going and get on said board as Lucic will pitch it down behind the Oilers goal line into the near side corner. And see if we can 
get it going. This one's going to be worked out by Fogel. And oof, carried ahead, and he was cranked. Nikita Zadorov just cranked. Warren Fogel, clean, big, open ice hit. If it wasn't against the Oilers, oh, I'd love to see that and see more of it. It's an icing against the Flames, however, 13.37 to go in this third period. And that is a big, clean man running big, clean man into the ice. That's a huge, stiff arm hit. Fogel tried to duck it by jumping out of the way, and Zadorov arm barred him right to the ice. You love to see those kind of hits still in the game. Clean, open ice stuff. Phil Kemp, though, to the rescue with another shot on goal. The Oilers 16th of the game, and they're cooking with fire now because all of a sudden they've got a couple of more shots this period, and they have got 16 on the board for the game total. They might just hit 20 tonight. Maybe that's the real victory here. I could not tell you. Anyway, the Oilers will see this one puck played across, up and off of a skate stick, and a couple of guys at the blue line, and the Flames keep it out of their own zone for the time being. Tyler Benson, Jake Vertanen, and uh, Brad Malone on the ice there for the Oilers now. It'll be back behind the Oilers' nets. Hamarukov, who escaped being punished with a power play goal against, gets it out of the zone, and there's Matvey Petrov carrying it across. He's going to see this one. Go into the corner on a spin around a pass. Benson, hard four check, takes himself out of the play. Okay, all right. 12.39 to go here in this third period. Played ahead. Here's a chance for Benson and all. Oh, that was Greg McCaig, pardon me. All he does is put it right into the flaming sea on Dustin Wolf's jersey, and we'll have a freeze with 12.33 to go and a stoppage in play for a commercial break. All right, fine and dandy. Folks, I'm going to run a quick commercial break for you. And we'll see what we can do it. Oof. All right. What do we got? Anything we got? Let's see what we can get on Twitter here and figure anything out as we just go to break. Um. Okay. Nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing here. Nothing, nothing, nothing here. Start of the third period. Nope. McLeod Trio has played the Caudry line four minutes and Lindholm line three minutes, five on five, and lost the shot share by only two to three. Sometimes survival is success. I guess that is the key here today for the Oilers. Survival is success. Don't get blown up too bad. And if you keep it within one or two, like somebody said right out of the gate, you're doing all right. I guess that's the key here. All right. Anyway, what do we got going here? Um, no, um, there is really nothing else. Okay. So we'll quickly, we've run the ad. We've run back. We're good to go. Folks, if you want to let me know any thoughts in the comments or chat section of this uh, stream, any thoughts on the game, let me know. I'd, uh, I'd love to probably interact with you at the end here. Um, yeah, there's not much else to add. Other than let's just get this one over. This one's been a snoozer. That's the problem. This one's been a snoozer from an Oilers perspective. Not necessarily a bad thing in the preseason. Just again, I don't know why you bother playing the game if you're just going to sleep on the ice. And that's pretty much what the Oilers have done for three, well, two and a half periods so far. However, let's just crush this off and get it done and dusted with, shall we? We could do that. As it's back behind the Oilers net. Devin Shore's going to get this one out. His line had a good success, and maybe they will still here in this third period, but they had really good success here in that first period of this game. Really dug in, really did well, just kind of steady Eddie grinder line, kind of doing exactly what they should. So that was exciting to see out of this trio that will more than likely play a lot of minutes together this season. But uh, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you other than that um, for the Oilers. But they just got to get this puck out of their own end as Jason Mers flips it ahead. It'll be left there for Devin Shore, who can't get it out. And now this one, again, it's fallen guilty to the same old adage as we saw in that second period late half, is it is just going to simply put you to bed as this game rolls on. That's, that's literally all that's going to happen. 
Now, I, I could fall asleep sitting up right now because this one, it was over as soon as the Flames scored one goal, but it's going to be over in 11 and change here on the big board at the Calgary Scotiabank saddled on the Flames. Keep this puck in. Fogel almost busted it out. Shot goes into the middle of the ice. Fogel will somehow turn this one back around after the deflection. He'll chip it off the boards and Ryan McLeod sees it hit the official. So it'll be back into Flames possession. Huberto goes right to the middle. And here's the middle chance. And I mean for the Flames NHL roster too. They've iced an NHL roster here and they've only got 27 shots in 10 minutes and 51 seconds left in the third period. So we've talked about just about five-sixths of a hockey game and the Oilers ice in a very young, very veteran AHL kind of a caliber lineup. And they really have not gotten beat bad. And it's actually Rooney that's the, uh, that's the uh, 21 for the Flames. That's good to know. I didn't know that. So there we go. Anyway, folks, let's keep crushing this off. We've got less than 400 views to top the last live stream. So here we go. Let's get it going. And does number 19 have any... Uh, any chance of being in the Oilers lineup. Jake Vertanen has not shown well. Jake Vertanen has very much so struggled this preseason. And I don't know, like Mark Spector is speculating he doesn't have much more leash left. I just don't think he's got the step to play in the NHL game at current. And I just think that's, that's tough because you try to come back and earn it. But there's just nothing there for him at this point for him. 10-19 to go in this third period. The Flames starting to assert their dominance here as the back half of this game goes on, just kind of keeping the Oilers at bay and not doing much at all. So we got to see anything here, and looks like that guy just downed his beer. He's having a good night. Finish it off strong. Beer sales cut off in 19 seconds of game time. Can you run and get there, bud? I hope you can. However, this one's going to be worked there, and it's Ryan Murray firing it around and back to the blue line it goes. The Oilers can't get it out. Flames keep possession in the offensive end. It's Milan Lucic against Brad Malone. That's uh, a couple of ex-teammates going hard to hard on the boards there. Noah Hannafin fires a shot. It goes wide. That's how it beats Drew Skinner last time. Weird shot from a weird angle. Rebound, and it found the other side of the net, but... Um, no fan of Hannafin, he's not moving that puck any too quick. This one's going to go up and out of play. That puck deflects into somewhere in the stands. Not really sure where that one went. So we will have a freeze in the action at 9.47 to go in this third period. And should I just do the game review, me sleeping? I, I mean, that would be a very fitting game review for this hockey game for the Oilers. Let me tell you that much, as it's been very tough to watch here late in this second and third period of action. However, we're over 252 views. I should probably try to keep the energy up, but it's also kind of tough when this game's wore on as long as it has. But let me tell you, 8,302 8, views on the stream. Color me shocked that we had this kind of broadcast tonight. I did not expect that in the least. And you want to talk about the math on that. It's 2.3 minutes, and you times that by 8,302 views divided by 60 minutes friends we crossed the 300 hour mark on the live stream that feels good that feels really good because i can tell you for sure we're going to cross 350 hours on the channel today and that's that's pretty much a tenth of what you need to get monetized in a year you need 4000 hours in a year and we're going to put it at a tenth of that in one day that is absolutely banana towns for dolly tv folks if you're just joining us and you're saying, this is not the worst thing I've had to listen to this week. Hey, you know what? This guy could have some really good thoughts on the Oilers. Why shouldn't I subscribe? I think you should subscribe. That would be really cool of you to hang out. And if not, um, if you would like to watch the game and you haven't already, the link is to the game is at the top of the chat. I'd love to have you along for that as well. Unfortunately, I won't. I won't be live streaming. Friday night's game as the Oilers are at home against the Flames. But, um, um, yeah, I won't be live streaming Friday night just simply because I'm going out to Langdon. 
going out to Langdon to watch a Led Zeppelin cover band with my buddies from high school. I think that sounds like a thrill of a time. I'm actually really excited to catch up with them. So, like I'm saying, I, I, the Led Zeppelin cover band, you had me at that, but you tell me I get a cover, get a catch up with some really good friends, that's going to be a blast too. However, 9.28, we got to go in this third period for all of the hockey action we're going to get. And that's kind of what co convinced me when I was upstairs. I'm like, I don't get a stream Friday, so let's get this done. And of course, Friday night, I invite you, since I'm not live streaming the game, when you're not watching the Oilers on Friday night, to go check out the Cold Lake Ice stream on Cold Lake Ice TV, the companion channel to Dolany TV that I also help run here on YouTube that I'd love to have you along as a viewer of that night. Anyway, folks, we are just about done. Nine minutes. It's the nine-minute drill. 450, no, 540 seconds. <sighs> wow, I messed that up. <laughs> Laughable. 540 seconds to bleed off the clock before the Oilers lose 2-0 to the Calgary Flames at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome tonight. Hey, let's just get it over with, shall we? Let's get it done. 2-0 for the Calgary Flames late in this third period as things are winding down a ho-hum game from really both teams. It was not a fantastic game by any kind of things going, that is for sure. Anyway, let's get this going. I, I could not get my cat to settle on TV uh, pff, Cat would never do that on command, unfortunately. And it's an icing call against the Oilers with 8.16 to go in this third period. This this third period is dry as paint. Paint drying is tough to watch, but I'd almost prefer it because there's a payoff that you get a fresh coat of paint. There is, there is no payoff for watching the rest of this game. All right, anyway, let's see what, oh, oh, the young crowd's really enjoying this game there. Oh, yeah, they're getting really excited about that. They're getting, real, got to get the selfies. Got to get the selfies of the Jumbotron of you on the Jumbotron. However, Stuart Skinner, 8-11 to go in this third period. Just because he wants to put us more into a rocker and put us to sleep, he's going to freeze that fuck. Why not? Freeze it up, Skinner. Freeze it up, buddy. You got this. And we are absolutely cruising along tonight. But I just like to go to bed. There's there have been a lot of live streams where I'm like, man, I'm doing the full game, and then it's just just pulling teeth to get me to do the whole game. And that's this one of them. Quite honestly, this is one of them. But the Oilers just stepped behind all night. They've had some good looks, not great looks. And Jacob Markstrom has not had to make a hard save at all tonight. Here's Warren Fogel getting tied up by Noah Hannafin who's just right in place, defensive stick, gets it done. And this has been the tough part. The Oilers' top line still has not even been that great against the Oilers or any line of the Flames. And that's really tough to watch because you'd like to see them kind of dominate a little bit more out there and at least get their chances. Um, and I don't know anything about a Tyson Berry trade to Nashville. Haven't heard anything on that. I'll have to research that. Um <laughs> Do I think I could take the Oilers Fanatic or Peyton on the radio in a boxing match? My friends, you wouldn't want to see me throw a punch. You can actually watch me throw a punch. I I did a video when I was in college with UFC heavyweight Tanner Bozer about learning how to throw punches in the UFC, and it is it is the most pitiful thing I've watched on replay of my life. That's I uh, yeah yeah it's not good. I don't think you'd want to watch me do any charity boxing. That's for sure. And I mean. Not that I'm scared about messing up this ugly mug, but I don't know. I ain't, I ain't doing any charity boxing. We'll leave that to the boys who did it best, right? I think it's Marty McSorley, or was it Dave Semenko? I think it was Dave Semenko that did the charity boxing match with Muhammad Ali back in the day. We'll leave it to the guys that uh, have a clue what they're doing. I ain't, I ain't getting cracked out one shot. I guess that's just to save myself the embarrassment, more or less. And that, but again, that's something that, hey, if we can raise good money for something, why not, right? That's something that down the line you can always look at because that's what those guys are doing. They're making good money doing it. 6.04 to go in this third period. There's nothing to report. You're not missing out on anything. I'm sorry to the 69 of you, nice, that are watching. Nothing nothing to report. The Oilers can't shoot the puck. Um, There's just nothing special about this game. And even, even to your point on Dylan Holloway, there's there's... There's been nothing really to report from him from the first period on. He had one good look in the first period that I thought was a goal, but there was nothing else from there. 
John Denver, take me home country all roads. Oh man, I wish I was there to sing Take Me Home. And I, I don't know how these fans are so jacked to get on the Jomotron. I, I, I guess that's all there is that's left to do tonight. Well, I'm I'm liking that everyone's in the country roads at least. That's good to see. That's good to see, but I think uh lullaby like take me home country roads might as well Oh no. Might as well be all we got for tonight. Anyway, uh yeah, it's one of those. We're just gonna see this game out. We should be good to go the rest of the way home. We'll get the game review up and we should be good. Just get the get country roads off my T V and let's just Get this going. This is the most lyrics I've seen for Take Me Home Country Roads in my life, by the way. And uh, thoughts on Bian, Mark, and McKay, guys. There's really not much to report. They're doing what they're supposed to do at camp, and that's nothing pretty, so that kind of sucks, right? There's nothing exciting about them to watch. Except for them just doing what they regularly should do in an NHL lineup. So I guess that's the good takeaway. They're just looking like they should, which is good. They're not looking like absolute clowns out there by any means. Like just turning over pucks, taking penalties, and being dumb. So that's good news. But again, when it's ho-hum, not much to report. I guess that is the good news on them, all told. So, oh man, back's getting sore though. 5.51 to go here in this third period. And let's see what the Oilers can finish off here as the third period winds down. And I'm seeing the viewers trickle out. Yeah, it's about that time, folks. Head on out. Go get a bathroom break. Go get something to eat. And then come on back, head to bed, and watch the game review as Milan Lucic is in on a partial break. But the Oilers defense decides to break it up. And that's it. That's all. Okay, good enough. As we'd like to see this one just come to an end. 5.35 to go. And I'm not trying to be a sore loser or anything. This, this this game's been painful. And I think Jason Greger said it. I don't know why the Oilers forced the eight-game preseason. Most teams have six. That should be good enough. Get it over with. And that's it. That's all there is to a shot from Lucic. That's it there. Rebound on Skinner. He covers up quickly. 5.15 with a whistle. The Oilers are up to 20 shots on the game. We're up to 78 likes on the stream. And we're up to 8,485 views on the live stream as well. So it's been a very successful night. And it continues to still be successful as we close things out. And i got to take a picture of this. This is a once-in-a-lifetime number, four-digit wise. Uh, 8,888 subscribers. How fantastic is that? Nice to see. Folks, thank you so much for that. I didn't expect to actually catch that one tonight. That's nice to see as the shot goes across the blue line from the Flames, five minutes exactly left on our scoreboard now. We're just about done here. 300 seconds to bleed away in Calgary. The Oilers trying to get a chance free for Dylan Holloway. They just kind of leave it in the middle of the ice at their blue line. The Flames pick it up, does McLean. It's pitched ahead to Fogel on the turnover who dumps it in. McLeod's going to chase after it on the forecheck against Anderson. It's chipped forward. McLean with the puck there, and he's going to play it ahead chipped in and on the attack go the flames we'll leave it for the Oilers defense to move ahead worked over hard by Backlund was Ryan McLeod and Michael Backlund looking like a man taking down a kid there it looked like the old football wrestling parties that you get going when you got family football in the backyard after too long of a Thanksgiving if you're watching the Americans anyways as this one goes batted down, Jake Vertanen's out there. Haven't seen him in a while. I mean, haven't really paid attention to who's on the ice because nobody's been doing nothing. The Oilers can barely skate in their own end right now. They're getting worked around edge work on the boards by the Flames. Nima Linen's had a more quiet night. He still had some pretty stellar hits and rough stuff, either on the forecheck and on the defensive zone of things. That's a shot block there by Jason Demers of the Oilers, and then that'll keep possession for the Flames, though, walking in. Weger scores. Weger point-blank walks in on 
The Flames attack, and he scores their third goal of the game. Whew! That was a rocket off of a wrister there by Weger. That was a great shot, and that is going to be it. That is going to be all for the others tonight. Guaranteed three-goal loss. All right. And that covers it there. That was a wicked wrister, and he just nails it home. Wow, what a shot from Mackenzie Weger. Look forward to seeing that a lot from him tonight, or this season, pardon me. Yeah, there's not much else I can report. All right, good to go. We'll see the puck pitched back into the Flames zone. 3.30 to go. So, friends, we've now got less than 200 seconds to go in this hockey game. Get it done, baby. We have 8,540 views on the stream. We're 60 views away from that new high and number nine all time. Let's go get it, shall we? Offside at the blue line. 3.09 to go in this third period, my friends. This one's about to wrap up a very uh, nothing to note game for the Oilers. Stuart Skinner gives up two goals. Calvin Picard gives up one. And hopefully that's it. That's all for the goals against tonight for the Oilers. That would be duly great and grand if that could be it. And that could be all, quite honestly. So, folks, let's wrap this one up here. Finish it off strong. 33-20 to 20, the shots for the Flames. 3-0. For the Calgary Flames as Hannafin wrists it in on the dump. It's down and cleared into the Oilers' end where it's met there by Ryan Murray who plays it ahead. It goes past Eric Ryan and the Flame. He's battling in Trevor Lewis. Turned back and Barry will battle here for it. He'll play it ahead and up and into the neutral territory it goes before it hits an Oilers' stick. So we'll have a hold off on things for a second. 2.40 to go in this third period. And the Oilers seeing this one wind down after it was never really in uh, doubt for the Flames, I don't think. I think they had this one all the way home. And now the Oilers, second line, that grind line, getting some time in the offensive zone, keeping a puck alive. Derek Ryan, Devin Shore, and Matthias Janmark as Ryan Murray can't handle a puck. It goes back to Devin Shore, back behind the Flames net, kept alive there, niftily by Janmark. That, hey, you like to see that. Tyson Berry fires a shot and Dustin Wolf swallows it up in his flaming sea chest crest and all over him was Derek or uh, Devin Shore pardon me and with 207 we have a freeze in the action again and we'll hold up for another little bit before we get things going to finish this game off with 207 to go yes sir three nothing for the Calgary Flames Dustin Wolf freezes that puck and now we've got just a few minutes to go to wrap this one up. And we got wrists at home. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's get this going, shall we? Let's crush this off and just wrap it up with a nice little pretty bow. Call it a night at the rink and let's go home. That'd be my plan. That guy's jacked. That little kid is jacked and his whole section's jacked up with him. Everybody getting in, and I think the Flames fans are really feeling it tonight. They're excited to beat the Oilers. Hey, it don't matter that it's preseason. They're excited to beat the Oilers. You like to see it. And one thing I've never been is on the Jumbotron at a sporting event. Quite honestly, never been on the Jumbotron. That's one interesting note there for me. That guy's trying to get a photo too late. And these guys trying to get a photo too. you love it. you love it. And Paul coming in, what a team this year. Yeah, absolutely. Paul, you've got yourself a team in that Calgary Flames. And I honestly, here's the thing. I don't care if the Flames are even any better or any worse than they were last year. Just to achieve in the in the offseason what they did, complete renovation of the team's core outside of Lindholm, Backlund, and Hannafin, and Rasmus Anderson. Uh, unreal. Obviously, Jacob Markstrom's back there too, and... Ladar's back and all that, but it's just unreal to add the pieces you did despite subtracting the pieces you did. Literally, Kachuk, Gaudreau, Monaghan. The Calgary Flames. The Calgary Flames got shipped out of town. And you've got an entire new court that you are not missing a beat with. For some reason, the Oilers are playing with an empty net. Jay, I love, I love your gusto, but 
<laughs> it's it's a little it's a little not needed. It's uh, I mean, you just you just could have let this one you could have let this one die. You could have cleaned it up. Buck thirty one to go. Forgot about it. I would have been fine with forgetting about it. And I'm not I'm not here to criticize Jay Woodcroft and his coaching style. I'm just saying you could have just let it be. Don't don't need anything fancy. However, friends, a buck eighteen to go in this third period. And I am so relieved we are just about done with this one. Because this has been painful. And I mean, it's not even that we're losing 3 nothing. It's just... Oh, watching the Bakersfield Condors take on the Calgary Flames. Not a, not a good time. Not a good time. 10 out of 10 would not recommend again to stream a full game on YouTube. Despite putting up 8,612 views and a 10, top 10 video all time. The Flames icing it. Whoa, they hit the side of the net. No, 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 no. You can't do that. You can't keep us. You can't keep us going here, man. You can't. Anyway, Matt Fay Petrov earning the ice time at the end of the game with Dylan Holloway. You like to see that. Petrov, he's had a good game. He's had a very exciting, good game. Just drawing two penalties. Getting a really good shot on net. Just He's been solid out there. I like... I like seeing a kid that's expected to do nothing slotted in on the fourth line in a preseason game on an NHL roster, and he goes out there and does that. We are out of our mercy. Eight, five, four, three. Insult to injury. Jonathan Huberdorf scores the empty netter. You got a good one in him, Flames fans. You got a very good one in Jonathan Huberdo, and there you go. Yep, exactly. Why not run an extra forward on a nothing game? I get that. And I like I said, that's why I'm excited that Mefe Petrov was out there. That's he earned it and he got it. So that's good to see. I guess there was a plan after all. And Jonathan Huberto sells it, finishes it, a four nothing game. Folks, while you're waiting for me to get the post game review up, I'm gonna give you the link to the Marcus Nemalinen video. If you can go check that out, I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning in. To tonight's game it's a long haul I mean I I you got to remember Eric I mean I just streamed for three hours straight and same point two I try to do the play-by-play -play because that's my specialty and secondary to that I worked eight and a half hours today regular day job on top of coming out here and doing this and it's been a long day we'll get the game review done and uh, we'll see you in the game review Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Sorry, I ran out of steam. I knew I was operating on nothing, but it is what it is. I'm up on out of here. 300 